the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. If you are
Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. Something will happen to you as you sing this song. Just a keyboard. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all the earth. She bakata balada. Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all. There is a cloud of his glory in this place. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it fall on us tonight. Let it cover all the earth. Let your kingdom come. Let it come. Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom reign. Adonai, Adonai, Lamb of God, you are worthy, say, you are worthy, worthy of my praise. King of kings, Lord of lords, let your kingdom reign. Adonai. Adonai Lord of Lords, 
Lord of Lords. From everlasting to everlasting, we declare that you are God. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, let the name of the Lord be exalted. One generation will declare your praise to another. For you are seated upon the throne, mighty, majestic in holiness. We worship you. Lord, we bless you. We give you all the praise. Majesty. Please go ahead and worship him. This is part of the meeting. When we worship him, he makes his presence manifest. Sing unto him psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Make melody from your hearts to the Lord. Let a song rise from your spirit to him. An expression of deep worship. We open up our hearts, O God, and we connect to your spirit. Lift your hands and your voice and worship His holiness. Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy. give us very strange visitations tonight give us strange visitations oh God give us encounters this is called koinonia let it be a place of encounter for us tonight Hallelujah. The saints and the angels bow. The redeemed worship you now. Holy, 
holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The saints and the angels bow. The redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are We'll forever be chasing after you We'll be chasing after you Not just the things you can give Lord, we'll forever be chasing after you. We'll be chasing after you. We will rise from faith to faith, from glory to glory. Oh yes, we will rise from faith to faith, from glory to glory, and we'll forever be chasing after you. We'll be chasing after you. I'll forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you. Hallelujah. Jesus, we just want you to know that we love you. We love you with everything. We are gathered here every week not just to receive from you but to express our love to you. Lord, we want you to know that we love you. We love you from the depths of our hearts. We are not using you to get promotion house, cars, success but we love you go ahead and just express your love for him in one minute let him know that you mean business with him you love him not just that you want to receive from him, but you love him. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Your word is not an opinion to me. Jesus. 
For the last time, sing it from the depth of your heart. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus be glorified. Please sit down. Thank you, Jesus. Just turn to your left and right. Just pat your neighbor on the back. Good evening. And we'll get... Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for tonight. And we thank you because you will bless us remarkably hallelujah we'll just do two things very quickly um we're going to thank god very seriously while you're seated i'll prompt you for the manifold blessings of the lord upon our lives and upon this house we cannot be ungrateful people hallelujah god has done so many wondrous things in recent time and um, we owe him thanks the second thing is that we're going to pray for Nigeria in one minute hallelujah ah Pastor Shekri, it's good to see you bless you praise the Lord we're going to pray for Nigeria um, whether or not you're a Nigerian it doesn't matter so long as you are in this place we are very patriotic citizens and we believe in what god is doing we're going to rise up mike you play the national anthem once and then we'll prophesy into nigeria and then we'll sit down please let's rise can we do that I'm very fanatical about we will contribute our own quota of prayer and prophecy over the nation i believe in this country i believe in what god is doing nigeria is god's firstborn in africa nigeria will return the christ mm. hallelujah nigeria is the holy land that isaiah spoke about it was not just amalgamated by lord lugard there is a prophecy upon our nation hallelujah i want you to know that if you don't know that you would think we're just um forget the corruption that you see ar around and all the things that look like there are armed robbers there are armed robbers in every nation there are thieves in every nation there are touts in every nation there are poor people in every nation and um, let's take our eyes off these garbages that the devil tries to bring before us it is true that there seems to be corruption in the system but then i want you to know that in the midst of this god is doing something and we choose to see what he is doing it's a choice hallelujah ready okay hallelujah in one minute let's lift our voice and prophesy to this nation we speak to the soul of this nation go ahead and pray right from the presidency 
we speak to the soul of this nation in the name of the lord jesus christ nigeria remains a place of prophecy nigeria remains a habitation of the presence of god go ahead and prophesy in the midst of the corruption in the midst of all the things that are happening we declare that the lord is arising like a mighty one in our midst we prophesy that nigeria will step into her prophetic destiny in the name of jesus christ that old proverb will no longer be used in this nation we speak forth we declare in the name of jesus nigeria will be a place of righteousness it will be a place of peace it will be a place of justice nigeria will be Bula and hepzibah it will be the desire of nations we prophesy we speak over our leaders we speak over the citizens we curse boko haram in the name of jesus we declare that the grace of god is at work in this country patriotism becomes our anthem in this country the banner of godliness will never never be torn in this country it will be lifted higher than ever and lord we surrender this nation to you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah secondly let's just lift our voices and thank god for what he's doing through this ministry the privilege for us to contribute our quota to the advancement of the kingdom lift your voice and thank him for the media ministry the teachings the impact the miracles the testimonies we are grateful people we are grateful people we return all the thanks and the praise thank you for the millions of lives that are changed destinies that are transformed souls that are saved encounters thank you for churches and ministries businesses and lives families individuals and territories that have been influenced by the hand of god upon our lives i like us to thank god for it lord we choose to say thank you we are grateful people we are very very grateful people we thank you hallelujah hallelujah now ask the lord for a visitation tonight he will change us by the power of his word thank you jesus hallelujah god bless you please be seated welcome everyone especially our visitors who have come from far thank you so much we honor you may the lord bless you in the name of jesus and for those outside we bless you can we give them a big big round of applause thank you <laughs> philippians chapter 4 please i'd like us to be very sensitive tonight because god is going to be touching us um we'll pray just share a few things to charge and admonish our hearts and then we will pray philippians chapter 4 from verse 8 Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 are we there let's read one okay it's projected um, one to read finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, it says, think on these things. Hallelujah. Um, one of the 
very powerful things about working in the kingdom system is the fact that we have the privilege to understand the way God works not just the results we get from him but to be able to understand the dynamics of his operation hallelujah when you go to a herbalist he is not committed to explaining to you how things work praise the lord he will ask you turn and move backward and you have no right to ask him why you should move backward and he tells you sit down and then he says call the name of whoever you want to kill or whatever you want or the the woman you want to marry or the man or whatever took you to his place call it three times and you have no right to say baba why because if you dare ask why it may cost you that asking alone can bring some sort of punishment are we together now and so when people operate in the world system usually there is a lot of secrecy the process of achieving things in the world is usually kept secret so that um we only see results without understanding the dynamics and the danger there is that it makes only a few people um to be equipped enough to be able to produce those results are we together now the bible tells us that the nation of israel saw the acts of god the results but he said unto Moses, he showed him his way, the dynamics. He guided him through the spiritual principles that were responsible for producing those results. And let me tell you something, your Christian experience is really barren. If all you have in your life is results, without an understanding, a comprehension into the working principles that produce the results. Hallelujah. So part of the components of kingdom living it's not just to celebrate results this person was healed this person was blessed i prophesied and then there was a result or god opened the door favor came listen anything you do not understand its process you cannot have confidence in it true faith hinges upon understanding for as long as there is a lot of vagueness in our christian experience we will think we are believing in God. But the truth of the matter is that we are just hoping that we are right. The apostle said, but I know whom I have believed. The word no there is not aware. It's an encounter. He's not saying I am aware of him. He's not talking of awareness. I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded. That's conviction. I am persuaded that is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. So as we attempt to grow spiritually, remember what I told us spiritual growth is. There are two components that constitute spiritual growth. Number one is the measure of your conformity experientially into the person and the image of the Christ. That's the first spiritual index to measure spiritual growth. The degree to which you are coming into conformity experientially. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The degree to which you are becoming an expression of the Christ. Paul prayed and said, my little children of whom I travail. He said, until Christ be formed in you. So the formation of Christ is the experiential building into your person. And then the release of the fullness of the life, the character, the quality of the Christ. The second component of spiritual growth is your understanding your comprehension of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom it matters that you understand how the kingdom system works hallelujah that way you will be able to function like the christ so when the bible says god made man in his image and after his likeness that's what he was talking about the image of christ is the word glory is the word doxa right in, in the Greek is doxa, in the Hebrew is kabod. It means the essence of a man, the very component that make that man whoever he is. So the Bible says God made man in his image. And we know that Christ is the express image of God. So God created man in Christ. Right? 
he created man to be a reflection of the word a reflection of the christ when he says he made him in his likeness there it talks about functionality that man will function the way the godhead functions are we together now and so the way the godhead creates is the way man should function creatively the way the godhead thinks is the way man should think are we together now and so when we say you are growing spiritually don't don't confuse it we're not just saying you are seeing visions or angels or throwing people under the anointing you can measure your spiritual growth at any point by first examining through the eyes and the mirror of god's word to what degree you are becoming like the christ experientially that's the degree to which the fruit of the spirit is at work in you the degree to which the spirit man has gained ascendance over the flesh right the degree to which carnality um is 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 dead from your life the degree to which you become heavenly minded that you set your hearts on the things that are above and not the things that are in the world and then your understanding of the principles of the kingdom listen 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 it is possible to conform into the image of the christ and never experientially enjoy the benefits the benefits of kingdom living you can conform to the image of the christ but then it takes a comprehension of the laws of the kingdom for you to be able to walk in success prosperity divine health etc etc hallelujah there are many believers who love god there are many believers who are sincere but sincerity is not the key to victory are we together now it takes more than sincerity to be victorious psalms 82 verse 5 please the bible says they know not so that's the that's the diagnosis although they are mighty men verse 1 starts by saying god stands in the congregation of the mighty and then he begins to question the people right verse 5 says they know not neither will they understand it says they grow up in darkness they walk in darkness and as a result the earth is out of his course the next verse says know ye not do you not know have you not come into this understanding that ye are gods and that all of you not some of you not men of god ye are gods is that true and then he says um um how the, how does he put it now he says know ye not that ye are gods and then he says in verse 7 he says but ye shall die like men men and fall like one of these princes so the question is they know not neither will they understand notice there are two things there right let me tell you something wisdom listen listen wisdom is knowing what to do understanding is knowing how to do it that's why the bible says with all you're getting it will still not profit you get understanding the dynamics of his operation that way your success becomes predictable it may take time but i guarantee you for as long as there is the day after a night your success will be inevitable hallelujah and so as i challenge us week after week the goal is to help us to gain mastery everybody say mastery to gain mastery over the laws and the principles of the kingdom so that on the strength of our understanding we will be able to walk in dominion you've heard me say it again and again that dominion is not an impartation there is no such thing as an impartation for dominion hallelujah dominion is what happens to you when you come into an understanding of the principles of the kingdom for as long as you live you will never have a problem wearing a shirt and a trouser or your skirt because there is a principle is that true there are all kinds of tailors all around the world but they produce similar results because tailoring works by principle nobody sits down and says i think like um turning the clothes this way there is a formula 
are we together now tonight i just want us to examine two things as we pray that will help us i'm amazed brothers and sisters listen i'm amazed at how many believers think that because they are born again automatically their lives will become that desired heaven on its own nothing can be further from the truth while it is true that salvation gives us access to the fullness of all that christ has purchased it takes understanding to walk into the experience of it the bible says that god had put all things under his feet it says but as it is right now experientially we do not yet see all things are we together now and so so that our christian experience does not become a circle of frustrations that on one side you are reading your bible and you are seeing the blessings and the promises of god and while it is true that the pivot of the christian pursuit is not things we're not walking we don't just seek god and pursue him just for things hallelujah the goal is not to get things however i want you to know that eventually in your life you will need consolations to be um they serve as an evidence and as a motivation to your christian experience are you following what i'm saying now so eventually when your life refuses to bear fruit it will begin to challenge your convictions about god while it is true that we love god whether the door is open or not while it is true that we will serve him no matter what happens brothers and sisters it is best to serve god see man was never designed to serve god under pain under penury under suffering this is why when you serve god under those conditions it's called sacrifice because you were not designed by default to function that way are we together now so you must believe that god wants you to walk into the victory the blessings the prosperity the increase and now sometimes we men of god fall victims um, of misleading god's people in a sincere attempt to make people spiritually minded in a sincere attempt to push people to become spiritual and to bring people to a point where our passion for god is above and beyond everything we we seem to trivialize the fact that god is interested in their success are we together now so we have a a congregation of people who love god but they are failures in every way and then eventually the reality of their fruitlessness begins to choke their christian experience and by the grace of god everything that you will hear will be within the context of the kingdom and within the balance that will make your life holistic are we together now so you will be taught as always that your love for god will be the ultimate you cannot afford to tie your work with god to money and car and prosperity and marriage and child and whatsoever no 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 it will make your christian experience fake are we together now however it is god's desire for you to have a consolation in your christian experience say amen. amen i've taught us again and again that materialism is not having materials there are poor people who are materialistic absolutely materialism has nothing to do with materials materialism is the influence of the flesh the influence of things around when they occupy the place of god don't be mistaken that when you see somebody come out of a jeep or somebody wears a designer clothes that person is materialistic far from it in fact let me tell you sincerely most wealthy people conquered money to be wealthy in the first place are we together now so god wants your success and my success say amen, amen. but paul began to give us one key to the success principles of the spirit and he says finally brethren let me talk about your thought life paul in many scriptures and the psalmist and jesus himself begins to tell us that in our quest 
to become all that God has destined for us, we must pay attention to our minds. We must pay attention to our thought life. Our convictions and the things that we think about have a lot to do with the manifestation of our reality. And again and again, the word keeps challenging us to order our thoughts aright. Are we together now? So the Bible begins to tell us that if you want to succeed in life, your thoughts must be cultured. They must be governed. I've taught us again and again that your life revolves around your most dominant thoughts. This is very, very true. That your life becomes eventually a reflection of your convictions. Right? And, and so in, in Psalm 19, let's look at Psalm 19 verse 14. The psalmist puts it in a very interesting way. Two keys that are responsible for our success in life. Two keys that are responsible. Psalm 19 verse 14. I, I believe, yes, it should be. Psalm 19 verse 14. Let's turn there. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 19 verse 14. Let's read it together. One to read. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The psalmist tells us to be successful. There are two things that are very important. Number one is the meditations, the contemplation, the content of your heart. And heart there is interchanged in many places in scripture with mind. Are we together now? The meditations of your heart that lead to the words of your mouth can decide your destiny. This is very, very important. Hallelujah. Now, um, many people have not been taught that their mentality, their mindsets, their ideologies are largely responsible for the quality of their life. There are people who pray all the time and, and, and now there is a place for, you know, taking charge of spiritual forces that attempt to cause people to fail and so on and so forth. But we must realize that not everything about a man's failure is tied to devils and witches and wizards and so on and so forth. There are many of us who do not have the kind of mental state that will afford the Holy Spirit birth in us the things that will create a glorious destiny. Hallelujah. And so Paul is teaching us that whatsoever things, he's giving us spiritual parameters that govern our thought life. Because I tell you this sincerely, there is no man that wins the Olympic by mistake. There's no such thing as success by mistake. It doesn't happen. Hallelujah. So it must be intentional. And we must upgrade our mindset. You can um, make make reference to our teaching on pulling down strongholds right that message will bless you because a man is entirely a summation of his mindset and ideology and i told us how that our ideologies are principally formed from our cultures is that true our cultural background we come from different areas with different ideologies about god about success about marriage about life about victory about failure etc when we come to God, we don't come so that he will add to those faulty mindsets. We open up our spirits and we ask him to edit. That anything that is not consistent with the pattern of the Christ must leave. Even if it is culturally correct. Is God speaking to us now? So many of us are victims of culture. We have held on to age-long stumbling blocks that will never afford us the opportunity to taste of kingdom success. We hold on to these things. We cherish them so much and the devil keeps taking advantage of them and destroying our lives. But we must choose to lay them down in the name of Jesus Christ. I told us also that our mindsets are formed as a result of our levels of exposure. The reality you do not know exists. You cannot open up your heart to take it. Is that true? And so the word of God exposes us to the possibilities that exist. So that by faith we can open up ourselves and tap into those possibilities. Our mindsets are also framed from our past. And for many of us, our past are not good experiences. 
but we have allowed it to become part of the walls in our minds that make us feel we are failures there are many of us seated here who believe that we really cannot do much and so that limitation that has come from our repeated failures of the past creates stumbling blocks and stop us from becoming all that god has destined take seriously what i'm sharing with you because your life is at the mercy of these truths hallelujah are we together let the words of my mouth let the contemplations and the meditations of my heart be such that it is acceptable unto you let it be such that is consistent with your ways if you must live in the kingdom you must subscribe to god's way of doing things see the word of god is not an opinion a believer is not just one who believes the word of god a believer is one who submits to the word of god you submit to it ultimately regardless of what you feel about it are we together now if i can change your mindset then you can prosper i guarantee you i don't care what the limitation is right now but if you refuse to allow your mindset to be changed then there is nothing that can be done to you a man's limitation is primarily his mindset everyone say after me in the name of jesus i receive grace from god for a change of mindset a change of ideology hallelujah this was the limitation of abraham for a long time god wanted to do great things through his life but his limitation became a stumbling block and one time god called him out and said abraham i want to expand your mind attempt to count the stars and he kept trying and failing and you know he gave up and god said this is how your seed will be finally abraham believed god and the bible says it was counted unto him for righteousness hallelujah it's very very important for us to understand um your thought life listen your thought life is a mechanism for creating things in your physical environment your mind is like a machine it's a spiritual component that is locked up in you that is responsible for creation i need you to understand this this is the principle of creation many people have been taught that creation is just about speaking no it's not about speaking alone there are two components that must coexist for creation to happen listen every time you speak what is not consistent with your mind every time you speak what is not consistent with that which is locked up in your spirit you just wasted your time believe me even for salvation the bible says with the heart man believes and on the strength of that conviction with the mouth confession is made and it will lead to salvation are we together now so in that same way the first key to succeeding is your conviction within that internal work that coming to a point where your thought life is completely governed by the word of god we call that state having the mind of christ the mind of christ is not just a mind that is spiritual the mind of christ is the mind that has been adjusted to think entirely from god's perspective so your viewpoint is consistent with the word of god hallelujah we have not been taught the consequences of thinking evil we have not been taught the consequences of having a faulty mindset listen your mind and your thought life will eventually create what you are thinking believe me on this when i tell you believe me eventually and so satan destroys our lives not just by bringing physical tragedies but because for many of us our minds have not been fortified by the word of god we have not embraced the spirit of god enough to produce that kind of alignment and adjustment we allow all kinds of thoughts that's why the bible says the weapons of our warfare are not what carnal in other words this battle is not in the flesh realm it says but they are mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds then it says casting down every imagination comes from the word yetzah creative thoughts that are planted by satan because if it is in your mind 
and it becomes an obsession it must manifest it is not if it is when listen whatever stays in your mind long enough i guarantee you no power in existence will stop it from manifesting Genesis 11. Genesis 11. Oh, I believe in you. I believe in you. Hallelujah. I believe in you. Let's read. This was a strange man called Nimrod Kush. Hallelujah. That the Bible says they, are, they were attempting to build a city. Look at, please, whether it is spiritual or physical is audacious. Let's just, let's, let's take it from there. Are we, uh, there are all kinds of schools of thought, whether it was physical or spiritual. That's not really the most important thing. The fact that it was a conception in the heart of man to build a tower. Listen to how men think. Goto, come, let us build a city and a tower whose top will reach the heavens and let us by it make a name for ourselves according to them they did not see any impossibility not impossibility of raw materials not impossibility of workforce not impossibility of anything let's see what happened verse 4 verse 4 and they said come let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make a name lest we be scattered abroad from the face of the whole earth are you ready now watch this this was nimrod proposing the idea are we together he was proposing the idea because he knew that if the people begin to think if they can get to a point where that mental picture is in them the same way is in him nothing will stop them verse 5 it says and the lord came down to see the tower which the children of men did what look at it not the tower that they are building in god's mind they have finished it look at this is that in your bible <clears throat> nimrod says look guys come together let us build a city we want something to manifest physically but we know that this is everything is truly possible so i want to do something to your mindset do you guys believe we are able and they said yes and god was watching the moment they agreed god said the house was finished he came down to see what they had built can you imagine that that a man had come to a point of persuasion where his thought life has agreed with the word of god right and then the bible tells us that it will be manifested listen listen do you know that god had to scatter them for that plan to fail god did not sit in heaven and say look don't worry these guys are just silly people he literally had to bring confusion to their languages so that they no longer would reason with one another every business empire you see today every successful ministry every impactful believer who has been mightily used by god listen when god comes to you when he calls you the second assignment is not to use you when he calls you listen he equips you and part of that equipment is he has to make you get to a point where your mind resonates with his own and then he can send you anywhere when he called moses he said, Moses, I'm sending you to Pharaoh. And Moses said, huh, I, I know Ramesses. Who do I tell them has sent me? And he said, you are calling for a revelation. I am that I am. I want to show you a bit of the possibilities that are in me. And when he showed Moses, he said, on the strength of this mental picture, go. Your life is at the mercy of your thought. First and foremost your mind your thought life this is the spiritual gateway for birthing ideas this is the spiritual gateway for birthing creativity this is the spiritual gateway for manifestation this happens with the anointing and every other thing listen 
if you ever will raise a dead, you must have conviction enough to stand before one. Are we together now? When a man walks to a sick body and looks at the sick body, you are seeing that this guy has cancer. Are we together? They are showing you a medical report. Terminal case of cancer. Yet you have the gods to overlook that report. Because there is a higher reality. Your mind has been programmed to see something higher and better. Are we together now? You pray for someone on a wheelchair. Your physical eyes is seeing limbs that are not... I mean, these limbs, even if he's well, he can't stand. Because he's just skin bones. And you have the audacity to hold his hands and say, stand up. Listen. Sit down, sir. Thank you. Your life is a reflection of the excellency of your mindset. That's why all things are not possible for everybody. The Bible never said all things are possible for everybody. It says to him that believes. Your first assignment is not to look for money to prosper. Believe me. Your first assignment is not to look for a job or a business idea. Please believe me on this. Your first assignment is not to run around looking for helpers. Your first assignment is to stay and rise to a point where your mindset, where you are obsessed with the possibilities, where the word of God literally is like your mirror. The same way when you look at a mirror, you see yourself. Are we together now? The Bible says as we behold him, we are changed. There is a transition. There is a transition. The workers, listen, none of you signed any form that you will come for koinonia this evening. Did you sign any form? But the workers came as early as maybe six, seven, eight, and they started dressing everything. The worship team was preparing. You know why? Because something has happened to them. There is an understanding. They know that God will draw his people to himself and bless them. Imagine if they sat down and said, let's watch. If we see people come, are we together now? I mean, who told the people that there will be an overflow outside? Don't say it's because it has been happening. There was a first day. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. The oil was at the mercy of the vessel. The oil was not small. The vessel was small. So the oil, the vessel made the oil look small. Are we together? The prophet said, go and enlarge your capacity. Borrow vessels. He said, borrow not a few. Enlarge your capacity. The moment there were vessels, the oil started multiplying. I learned this early in life. I've studied Jesus Christ and I've studied very successful people. Every successful person in life, every person that has been used mightily by God, first and foremost got to a point where they were convicted that the ability of the Spirit can work in and through them. Are we together now? Everyone, every single one of them. It took them time, but they stayed until they got to a point where their construction was unwavering. So you hear Job speaking things like, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. He says, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait till my change comes. In other words, he knew his change would come. When David was in the cave of Adullam, he knew that inevitably he was meant for the palace. Listen, listen, the devil stands helpless in the face of a man who has made the word of God his mentality. At that point, Satan becomes powerless, truly in your life. Because you are no longer governed by the circumstances and the things that your optical eye sees. Your convictions are higher than your physical perceptions. So you know that God is able. Now the question is, Satan has surrounded, or the issue is, Satan has surrounded our lives. Listen, he has surrounded our lives with things that compel us to think in a certain way. This is what cosmos is all about. Babylon, the 
this godless system satan has created structures around our environment they are called mind control systems from the movies are we together now to the way people behave right to spiritual forces that influence men all of them are aimed at bringing people to think in a certain way so by the time a lady watches a movie and she finds out that evil is celebrated in that movie a lady steals a man's money and they clap for her as being brave so the devil gives your mind a new definition of what great means that whenever you are able to oppress another successfully you are great and so you receive it are we together now and then eventually from morning till night we walk out in the morning and return to our homes with all kinds of ideologies that are not consistent with the word of god and what we keep seeing in our lives is a physical manifestation of things we did not bargain for but you thought about them long enough that thought life became so powerful that it necessarily made us to start speaking it listen there is a difference between speaking just because you want to talk and you are responding to the overflow of the content in your mind the bible says every time your mind is full you must speak it's not about whether you want or not uh -uh. it said be ye filled with the spirit immediately say you will start speaking so the moment your mind is full your mouth will start speaking is god helping us and so we begin to speak and while we are speaking we do not know that we are creating every time there is a union between your thought life and your words there must be creation so we call ourselves names that we have thought about for so long and we have verbalized and then our lives inevitably become it job said this he said the things that are feared most have come upon me he feared many things but the one he feared most became his reality are we together there were many things he was afraid of but the most dominant fear became his reality so if you want to reign in life you must realize that part of your assignment with the holy spirit and the word of god is to come to a point where you think like christ i love jesus they brought five loaves and two fish say ah how are we going to feed these people jesus said no 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 be silent don't corrupt my mindset i know all things are possible i'm el shaddai that you cannot see it does not mean it's, it's not there and he told them no he lifted it and he gave thanks and he told the people he said go and start sharing it sir what about the embarrassment go and start sharing it and the bible says as they were going see that This is why you find out that certain things happen to people in certain ways. Your father kept calling you stupid from birth. At 11 years, you were behaving helplessly stupid. Now, he thought he was venting anger. He did not know he was creating. Are we together now? They started calling the lady prostitute. You don't stay in your home. You go to somebody's home. And at age 13, 14, she looks back and sees that ah, she's beginning to have a lustful desire for men. Because every time your mind, I'm not just talking of hallucination. When your mind holds on to it like a conviction and your word speaks, it's like a woman and a man meeting together. There must be creation. I never confess things I don't believe because I'm wasting my time. Are we together? I pray that you will find, you will see light in what I'm sharing with you. When you see this, you will know that there is nothing coincidence about a man's destiny. Every man receives the fruit of what he created or allowed others to create for him. Hallelujah. And so every time your physical life is manifesting things that are not consistent with what the word of God says, 
the key is not to complain the key is to take your eyes away the bible says looking on to jesus not looking on to your circumstances not looking on to your situations looking on to jesus he calls him the author and the finisher of our faith right from the time we were 10 20 in this ministry i already saw a crowd i preached that way i behaved that way my convictions have never increased or decreased with people because what is in me is stronger than what i see what you are seeing today is what i spoke yesterday tomorrow will tell you what i'm speaking now are you getting what i'm saying now no 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 what you are seeing today is not my mindset of today <laughs> the physical realm always delays the realm of the spirit is faster i've gone ahead of this realm because there is the power of creation you can change any situation in your life it may take a while but as far as the heaven is above the earth you can change it the first thing is not just to shout and say god forbid god forbid is not a confession it's just an attempt to be human are we together now there are so many people who make all kinds of statements without the conviction to support it and so there are only statements no creation I will never fail me god forbid i won't fail yet you, you are seeing it right before you because you see what you are saying and what you are thinking are not the same so there is no creation are we together now there are many pastors who keep speaking and saying in the name of jesus i have this and that and that but the truth is their convictions are not true after the church service when they now sit down in a non-church platform they start saying the things they really believe it's like, oh boy man the truth is sky it's not easy oh. to be a man is not a day's job truly truly that's what they believe you see that that's their conviction it's easy for us to use all kinds of spiritual words on stage thee and thou and you know god is faithful everybody say god is faithful but the truth is whatever is the pivot of your thinking is what will be your expression even when you are alone ah uh, when i'm alone i say the same thing i look at myself and i prophesy and i speak this is not just positive thinking this is kingdom living are, are we together now it's, it's not just positive thinking brothers and sisters creation did not stop on the seventh day god only rested creation is still on that's what makes us god co-creators but we have lost the art of understanding god's technology of creation it's not just speaking it's speaking on the strength of a conviction that's what produces creation hallelujah what is the sum total of your ideology while you are seated here many of us believe all kinds of lies that the devil has put in us and paul is saying finally he says i've i've discussed other issues with you but i cannot end this epistle this way finally whatsoever things are true don't think lies what is a lie anything the word of god did not endorse anything at all so your situation currently is a lie as far as the word of god says <clears throat> see see the bible puts it this way i love the bible it inspires me it says listen it says for our light affliction imagine the hell you are going through and the bible calls it light for our light affliction <laughs> then it says which is but for a moment it costs 10 years a moment now it's up to you to choose to believe what the word has said for our light affliction which is bought for a moment it says it walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory then it says this why we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen how do you see what is unseen it never said the things that are unreal it only said they are unseen that tells you all you see is not all there is brothers and sisters there are microorganisms in this room you cannot see them 
but you keep something keep kunu leave it open for four days and see what it will turn into it reveals to you that there are microorganisms there are bacteria all around To be carnally minded is to be governed entirely by your vision. Your, your physical vision. And the devil knows that we are people who walk sensually. And so he has taken advantage of our senses to corrupt the reality of this principle. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory. You get the praise. You get the praise. You take the honor. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. God cannot do much with you if your mind does not authorize him to create realities in your life. God wants to find expression in your world. He wants to do a lot of great and mighty things. But he's dependent on your mindset. It's not just speaking. You speak on the strength of conviction. The world, our parents, our environment, right? The mindset in Nigeria has made us to think in a certain way. To an extent that when you fail right when things are not working in your life rather than staying with god and staying true until there is a manifestation you look for somebody who has failed more than you and you justify it you see an ideology it's supposed to be a solidarity a comfort but it has destroyed us so someone comes with a membership of 20 people and then god shows you that i can do more with you and you say, am, am I not better than this guy? At least I'm, I'm 20, he's 4. And by that we guarantee our mediocrity. And we remain there. Never to rise. Never to rise. Let me tell you how I think. I lock up myself in a room or wherever there is and i pray in tongues i soak myself with worship and i take a journey through the word of god because i don't trust anything else believe me any other thing outside the word of god is a lie now it's difficult to convince you because for us a lie is anything you cannot see, you cannot touch, or anything that is not true based on a reference. Jesus said, I am the way. I am reality. Not just an information that is correct. Truth is not what is correct. Truth is what has life in it. Anything that does not have the life of God in it is not truth. That's why it may be a physical reality that you have a lump a breast lump or a growth on your legs but the word of god tells you listen 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 the word of god tells you that that is an affliction that can leave it opens you up to the possibility that it can leave it's up to you to now dwell on this physical reality and die with it listen when remember in, in the bible remember in the bible that's why your eye your eye is very important in your dominion what you see physically and spiritually remember brothers and sisters the bible teaches us that there was a time listen there was a time when the nation of israel were dying and all of that and all of that serpents and so on and so forth and he told moses to make a serpent and put it up remember and he said if you can just look at it you will be free it matters what you see it matters what you look at you cannot sit down watching all kinds of 
devilish movies, watching all kinds of things, exposing yourself to environments that feed your mind wrongly, and then you want your life to conform to the word of God, it will not happen that way. So I surround myself. I soak myself with this atmosphere of worship, and then I begin to take a journey through the word of God. I read the book of Joshua, and I see what God told me, that no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life and like a camera that's it you see that you see what this camera is doing that's what your mind does to everything your mind snaps everything it's up to you to delete every junk in your mind by the word of god your mind is like a camera listen if you check this right now you will see what was captured how many of you look at me how many of you have posed well for a picture you thought you posed well but when you checked what it captured your eyes were closed you would have argued that you didn't close your eyes but at the point of capture that's it that's how our minds are you think you are getting it right but your your reality is telling you something is wrong up there if we are to look at these pictures right now you may think you were standing very cute but you find out that you were even like this sleeping but you can never remember when you did that the camera can remember you see that so you begin to see repeated woes in your life and say when did i do this i go to church every day i pray and your mind says well as far as i'm concerned every time you spoke you spoke things that were not consistent with your mind and the few times you spoke what was consistent with your mind there was creation this is the child oh we are failures it's not for us this and that and that and that it's not for people like us and listen the the most the most the, the saddest part of this is people who are negative about life have you seen people like that let me advise you run away from them quickly even if you grew up together it's time to break away from them there are people who stand close to you in five minutes they are saying something negative it's a devilish attitude believe me if that thing is at work in your life you need a retreat use the weekend retreat sam come um, is it that is it that in in koinonia people are allowed to just sleep like that while a message is going on you see what he's thinking are we together now and then you move around and you are looking eh, I'm seeing most Pastor Shegu and his wife do and co. What are they trying to tell us? <laughs> are we together? And then you saw that cake now. You see, they, their minds are negative. They always look for what is not working well. That's why their lives fail. So they try to attract people to themselves who are like them. He said, look, you may be a sincere person, but it must change. There are people like that they never are optimistic about life good morning what is good about the morning that's why the bible says this is the day the lord has made it did say the lord and satan this is the day the lord made like you cook food for somebody this is the day that the lord made he said let us rejoice and be glad not complain and be angry listen this is the revelation i have so i come out in the morning and somebody insults me and i remember this is the day the lord has made my assignment for me to receive what he has made is until i rejoice and i am glad listen listen this looks little but i'm teaching you something the bible is saying in the realm of the spirit the day has been made because he says he daily loads us with benefit it has not manifested yet there is a condition your condition is rejoice and be glad rejoice and be glad because god made the day satan also made the day there is how you receive what he has made so every time you wake up there are two days in one you choose the day you want to see so i get up in the morning thinking I'm awake. Somebody will be saved because of my life today. Someone will be filled with the Holy Spirit because of my life today. Koinonia is rising higher. And somebody calls you and says, Do you know that 
I'm, I've not eaten anything. And I said, don't worry, our light afflictions, which is but for a moment. This is, I'm showing you how I'm thinking. Listen, I'm not just saying this because I'm, I'm acting here. It has become my construction. It's impossible to entertain any negative thought without a scripture rising as a standard. If I lack explanation for the situation like Job, I will say God is greater. God is greater. Lord, I count you faithful. The reason why your day is always a tragedy is because there is no rejoicing. Satan knows that. And so from, it's, it's from your bedmate. Right? Immediately you wake up, you just look and say, why are you looking ugly like this? You say, please don't try me. I'm, 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 I'm angry this morning. I had a, a, a dream that is not supposed to be. The moment you step down, you find out that there's no light for you to bath. You see, there are orchestrations in your life, but the Bible says rejoice and be glad. It didn't say rejoice because good things are happening. Rejoice as a rule. Rejoice as a key. Are we together now? How many of you wake up and rejoice? In spite of the fact that immediately you rejoice, somebody just sent you a text and said, I've been tolerating you for a long time. I just want you to know that I heard what you said about me. Wallahi, if I did this and that, and you read the text. Listen, listen. It's up to you to allow that thing in your mind and start speaking. And you find out that for one hour you are thinking and resentment is becoming your most dominant thought and you verbalize it. Oh God, punish somebody for me. See, the Bible says, do not say before an angel, I made a mistake because they execute the words of the saints. Are we together? I never allowed, see, you can't be great thinking the way people are thinking. Somebody comes and tells you certain things and say, God bless you. I rejoice in the Lord. The Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. He emphasizes it. He never say rejoice because you are happy. You went to the board and you saw what looked like, um, it didn't look like your destiny and you, you, you just laugh. Not just that you move around and then you stand and say, anybody that tries me will die in this place. They know creation is happening every day every time unfortunately most of what we are creating in our lives are tragedies and setbacks another aspect to this is anything you do not celebrate in another person you are not authorized to have it in your life oh this is a key in the spirit for as long as I keep talking about Sam, forget about stepping into the worship anointing. I will never. For as long as I trivialize Mike's grace. You see that? Many of us do not have this attitude of genuinely celebrating people. See, see, from this night I'm giving you an assignment. Remove the negativism out of your atmosphere and you'll be amazed to see what will begin to happen in your life. One of the happiest person I've seen in my life is a gentleman called Alex. Not many of you know him. Alex is a very interesting personality. He used to play bass guitar for me before he traveled abroad to study. The only time I saw Alex sick, he said he had malaria. I couldn't believe it because he was laughing. I said, Alex, malaria. No, you are, you are kidding. I've never seen him angry. Believe me, those who know him will tell you. He used to cook. He uses hot pot. He will cook and because I don't eat much, he will just fetch more. and say, Pastor Josh, this is your own. He will just push it and sit down with the pot and eat it. Always laughing. I mean, there was a time we lost one of our sisters years ago. And he stood. Everybody was being remorseful. He was trying to be remorseful. And I laughed. I said, this is not you. You are a joyful person. Those kind of people hardly fall sick, if at all. They are very happy. They don't see no masquerade chasing them in any dream. Because they are happy. They are happy. 
the praise of God is in their mouth. They are always optimistic. Are, are we together now? Always optimistic. Listen, work with people like that. They are always optimistic. Every time they see challenges, tell them, don't worry. There's a better day. These are the kinds of people to work with. Not those who say, let's sit down here. I told you. Next time when I talk, you will listen to me. No, no, don't work with those kinds of people. There are pastors I will never work with. They are negative. They are cynical. They are always complaining. Why is ministry not working? Ministry is working. Are we together? Never. I will never become a party to those kinds of things. No. God is faithful. The Bible says the path of the just. I'm the just. It shines brighter and brighter. And as a pastor, you have to be careful. Don't carry your bad day and come and land it on your congregation. There are congregations that study the, the pastor. The moment they see the man like this, they know they are in for it. Because now he comes up and see those who are pastors laughing. You may not understand. Sometimes you can really be angry. And those who have annoyed you are there seated. And after singing the praise and worship, you are now looking. And then you say, stand up. And they, they pretend as if they didn't hear it. Did, did I not say, stand? I will curse you now. In this church, you people don't give. You don't honor your leaders. People are suffering. Maybe the guy is broke. Things are not working. He has come on stage. The members are not cooperating. You are not sowing. No prophet's offering. No love offering. No seed of honor. The man is frustrated. His wife is telling him, look, let's leave this job. Go and leave this ministry. Go and look for a job. And he carries that anger. And then everybody's in trouble. The drummer is in trouble. The keyboardist is in trouble. Usually it's the worship team that gets to receive the, the lash. You, you know that, right? Let's appreciate the worship team. You don't know what they go through. Really? Then immediately you finish all kinds of things. I choose to be positive. It's a choice. I choose to be true. I refuse to meditate on negative things my life is a blessing listen we're going to pray I, I just showed us this principle i will never think on things that are not true i will never think on things that are not pure i will never think on things that are not noble i will I, no man will preach me into this no there's no amount of message i will not declare my loyalty to anybody who is negative no i love you but carry your trouble and go away with it I see life only in one direction. Only one direction. The way the word of God says it should be. And no matter what is in my obstacle now, what is in me is bigger than it. It's a matter of time. My physical reality will always, inevitably, oh, that you will believe this. And you will know that that one shoe you have is not all that there is and you stop feeling negative you will celebrate that moment because you are waving it goodbye forever are we together now pressure is a product of a poor perception this is the reason why many people are under pressure you are trying to buy a suit of hundred thousand or two hundred thousand now because you are trying to show you are successful listen 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 if you can agree with god up here satan is no longer a factor the only way satan stops your harvest is to stop your seed time once it is sown it becomes automatic and the word of god is that seed you ask the leaders every time we're having leaders meeting we don't have time for any sorrowing and mourning when our sister transited to be with the lord we had our time of, uh, you know, just talking, but I challenged them at once. I said, no griefing. Remember my message that night. Why would you preach such a message when people have had certain things? Because her transition is not a tragedy. We know exactly where she is, and whatever it is that the devil orchestrated, we are happy that she's rejoicing. Paul said, for, for me to live is Christ. He says to die. He uses a business language. Gain. Gain. I refuse to be negative. There is nothing any man will do to me. Listen. 
that will make me sit down i'm just negative and say oh god some of you say, oh god take my life you will soon die no 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 it's not a negative prophecy it's a warning it's a caution we do it oh god no marriage no job nobody toasting me listen listen there is an atmosphere around you that is making that happen you won't agree but i'm telling you this there is an atmosphere i've seen ladies please um don't 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 uh, don't think that i'm using this against any lady i've seen certain ladies that may not even consider themselves to be as good looking and you see the kind of brothers coming because they are optimistic they know i will marry they talk about their children with confidence and you who stand say children care where is the man and then you find out that they sit down and true to it in your presence five people are calling and say agree for me now i'm ready to marry you and you are there with your negative atmosphere human beings have prophetic atmospheres they can repel or bring things to your life right so a guy wants to say hello to you they say turn around and and and, and turn around and say hello to your 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 neighbor and a, a guy walks to you and you carry your anger and bitterness that guy came for koinonia just like you how are you sweetheart sweetheart you don't stop there no. this person that is talking is maybe he's even getting married soon you now carry your anger you create this is why many people don't have friends two weeks and the friends are tired of them because there is an atmosphere that drives every good thing out of your life a negative atmosphere an atmosphere that is 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 from a wrong mindset he said let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable you will never hear me say anything negative about koinonia i'm the number one fan of this ministry i only see what god is doing and i celebrate it you will not see me sit down and be talking about another man of god and I'm telling you, Pastor Alpha, do you know that we saw blue flower in his church instead of yellow? No, never. Never. You must become very kingdom-minded and positive. I guarantee you, if you speak on the strength of that conviction, things will change in your life. I expect people to bless me every day. I'm surprised if they don't bless me. I expect it. It's not pride, it's the truth. Even this night there are people no 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 i this is my mind you you don't expect anything you are even surprised when it comes say for me are you sure i'm the one not to give why can't you listen 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 what makes you think you do not deserve it say i deserve the blessings of god shout it i deserve the blessings of god say one more time i deserve the blessings of god I'm not teaching you carnality. I'm teaching you how to walk in victory. Many people always believe is, is the chaff that belongs to them. If you've been evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more, brothers and sisters, with your heavenly father gave? How much more? Every time you talk to people, there are some of you, you talk about people and say, what's the latest? What's the latest mean? What is wrong in the person's life now? After six months of not meeting the person. Are we together now? What's the latest? Oh, she has a shop. So what's the latest? It looks like nobody is even going to say, I said it. I said it. I choose to believe the word. I choose to allow it become the construction of my mindset. Jesus said this, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he also do, and greater works. Brothers and sisters, I believe this. I don't know who is not working for, and I really feel bad for them, but as far as I'm concerned, this thing is going to work for me. There will always be people coming for koinonia. Lives will keep being changed. We will keep rising from glory to glory. When people say there is a casting down, for us here, there is a lifting up. It's by the hand of God. The anointing of the Spirit will never run dry in this house. At every point, there is increase. The word of God will never be scarce. It will never lose its place. Every time you come for koinonia, you will keep being blessed. That name will keep rising. This is my mindset. This is what I believe. This is how I live. In the open 
and in the secret in my sleep this is what i believe i believe that favor follows me like a shadow everywhere i go even people who do not want me there is something upon me that compels them to bless me i expect it when it happens i said that's right consistent i'm not going to betray my destiny with a negative confession i will not i will not i will not jesus is glorified consistently in my life everywhere i go to minister they receive the touch of god i am a blessing i'm not a liability to any man i'm not a cost to any man i choose to believe i am a blessing because he said in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed are we together these are the this is is part of the secrets that has preserved and multiplied the anointing of the spirit upon my life don't you think it's just prayer and fasting alone there is an understanding that keeps the anointing comfortable in me nothing in me will choke the anointing out of me because i have learned to create the atmosphere i have an unction from the and i know that's why you will keep coming you will drag yourself from your room by an agency you cannot explain it's called anakazo it's at work is the compelling power of the spirit supported by a healthy mindset i will never be a failure in life me and poverty are signed up forever i waved it goodbye it waved me back there's no possibility of meeting again i lift my hands in worship as i sing praises to your name I lift my hands in worship as I sing glory to your name. Son of man, what seest thou? He said, Son of man, what seest thou? He said, As far as your eyes can see to you. I will give us an inheritance he said abraham from where thou art it's okay that you are where you are but from where you are he said lift up your eyes from where you are lift up your eyes and see northwards southward eastward westward he said as far as your eyes can see brothers and sisters i see far i see far are you seeing your today or you're already seeing what god has designed listen if you see it brothers and sisters you can carry your 250 naira trouser and move happily because what people are seeing is a mirage they will soon see what is true the bible says the things that are on the scene are temporal temporal i see a ministry with prosperity and abundance I see a ministry touching people all over the globe. I see a ministry winning souls and saving lives. I see a ministry blessing people like, an, like a tree, like an edifice. That's what I see. That's what I see. I see a family of peace. I don't see myself being a wicked father. I don't see myself being an irresponsible father. I choose to be a good man. I, are we together now? it's a choice this is what i see i see koinonia having the best workforce any ministry can have that's why i celebrate them that's why i honor them you will never turn and see me embarrass the people i'm embarrassing myself i love them and they know it i'm not embarrassed about my love for them because they are gifted people and i've created the atmosphere for them to be motivated by love and revelation not force is God speaking to us? You've got to culture your atmosphere. Sister, your, the next level of your life is at the mercy of your mindset. You've got to change it tonight. And say, look, the Bible says male and female, he created them. There is somebody who loves me. I may not see the person, but there's somebody who appreciates me. Forget about the one who came and looked at you and said, you think you are fine. Let him carry his trouble and go. But you know what you are looking at. I am a mother who will birth prophets and apostles and preachers. This is the mindset. Are we together now? 
you look at your academics and it looks like it's nose diving and you say i know my redeemer live it and people say let's be real be real you say this is my reality i reject that thing you are trying to tell me my reality is what the word of god says and i choose to believe it 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 ah let the redeemed of the lord say so let the blessed of the lord say so let the prosperous of the lord say so let the great of the lord say so i choose to say it because i believe it it says the the righteousness of faith speaks in this wise on on the strength of conviction you must speak so we are not just praying blindly oh i know my life is blessed and you just turn and say oh boy we really well let's just continue my life no 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 that's not conviction that's not conviction see in my little work i don't boast of being a general in the knowledge of god but i know something about him he is faithful this attribute of god i can tell you experientially god is faithful god is faithful i've seen his faithfulness that's why i take out time to celebrate him those who put their trust in him never go disappointed i guarantee you if you were disappointed you did not put your trust in him if you really put your trust in him you will watch your way maker step into what looks like there's no way and begin to create ways for you the night time will look like morning will never come but when he arises like a mighty man that he is you will see him move my own is to keep agreeing with him lord i agree with you i may not see where i'm going but i know that with you is a glorious destiny while you are saying it they, they laugh at you no problem they should keep laughing because when it happens they will say he said it i will never be ashamed of speaking the word of god many of us are embarrassed about it so you believe it but you keep quiet you say lord i thank you because you are changing my story and and you now look and they, they laugh at you and they say mr man look let me tell you if i'm god i will hear your prayer you that you are praying see when they tell you that kind of thing you feel bad ah i shout it to the mountain top we are going from glory to glory from grace to grace in the name of the lord jesus christ that's what the bible says and that's what i believe that's what i believe let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus the word led there is permit this is a very simple message tonight that is an attempt to challenge us to know that our thought life has a lot to do with our destinies when you come to my place you don't see anything that reminds you of the devil and failure nothing nothing everything reminds me of heaven and greatness i have a little board where i wrote three scriptures one about the anointing one about favor the other one about about increase or greatness and i love it some of us are negative we must change negativism will make you birth things you do not want please believe me pastors our minds must be stayed on what the word of god has said there may not be money in the account of the ministry there may not be this and that but i choose to believe i'm not just confessing blindly but you choose to believe my god is faithful my god is alive hallelujah we are going to pray and when it's time to pray i want us to believe it as you pray you pray away these negative things that we have allowed the devil to put in our minds the bible says, casting down every year there are imaginations that have exalted themselves above the knowledge of the christ you went home this morning and there was no maggi to cook food you went home and there was nothing there was just pepper and you look at it and say this is a mirage my god is faithful what about the welfare i'll be sending to foundations tomorrow i see myself doing it papa oyedeko way before he had the money to buy any designer shouted he said yeah i can never be poor he saw something he saw something to an extent that he was in america and he said god sent him down to come and make the people rich with no evidence on your own part brothers and sisters i believe him i judge him faithful 
he has been tested through different dispensations and he has been found faithful my life is too small to judge the faithfulness of god from glory to glory you are taking me from glory to glory to glory to glory from glory to glory you are taking me prophesied glory to glory to glory to glory from glory to glory you are taking me from glory to glory to glory to glory from glory to glory you are taking me why we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for our light affliction which is but for a moment that financial scarcity is for a moment brothers and sisters that sickness is for a moment that limitation is for a moment he said though weeping endures for a night he says joy 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 comes with the morning you are not the first to see carryover on the board if you wore a matriculation gown you will wear a convocation gown oh come on now there is nothing happening to you that is new that's why i said i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord that's where you will hear testimonies that are worse than yours and how god delivered people out of it you are not the first to not have food to eat i shared this thing humorously i'll never forget one one time in my life i was so broke things were so bad i bought bread well for, for some people that's prosperity now i bought bread and then with granite and just choked the thing inside and i was just eating and rejoicing i'll never forget locking myself and dancing i was dancing because i saw people blessing my life i said the anointing in my life is an endangered species it's impossible for me to be ignored it's only a matter of time when i said that there was no hope of anybody bringing any seed to naira to say take he is taking you sister you will rise like an edifice i'm telling you it's from glory to glory you are taking me personalize it as we prepare to pray glory to glory to glory from glory to glory you are taking me from glory to glory to glory to glory from glory to glory you are taking me shout it after me say in the name of Jesus all I see around me is the goodness of God is the mercy of God is the favor of God is the faithfulness of God all I see around me is increase glory beauty favor I reject every thought that is not consistent with the word of God I am a blessing lift your voice and begin to prophesy lift your voice and prophesy we cast down by the blood of the eternal covenant every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of the Christ we cast it down we cast down thoughts of failure we cast down thoughts of limitation we cast down thoughts of inferiority oh hallelujah we are well favored the blessed of the lord moving from glory to glory we think only on things that are pure things that are true things that are noble things that have virtues and praise 
Kaparata Seketete. I refuse to see challenges. I see the faithfulness of God. I see the mercy of my God. Increase on every side. Honor on every side. Favor on every side. Make sure you're praying inside and outside. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit. I tear down every negative thinking. Every negative mindset. Every thinking on failure. Every thinking on mediocrity. Everything that makes me look like a nobody. I tear it down in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Oh, I challenge it. Challenge cultural mindset. Challenge the speakings of men over your life and destiny. For as a man thinketh, so he is. For as a man thinketh, so he is. Out of the abundance of your heart, of your mind, of your spirit, your mouth makes proclamations. I reject failure. I reject failure. I reject limitation. I reject failure. I reject limitation. I reject failure. I reject limitation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Listen. He said, We having the spirit of faith, as it is written, I believe and therefore I speak. He said, We also, like faithful Abraham, we believe and we prove that we believe by speaking. Are we together? Everything you know the word of God has said for you, you are going to speak it. You are not just speaking, you are creating. Are you ready now? Lift your voice and prophesy. Oh, I'm the head and not the tail. Come on, create realities. Above and not beneath. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him from them all. No man is able to stand against me all the days of my life. My path is as a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. I am like a well-watered garden. The smell of my life is like the field that the Lord has blessed. Increase on every side. Favor on every side glad tidings on every side prophesy prophesy i declare in the name of jesus i'm rising from one level of glory to another gentiles come to my light they are kings to the brightness of my rising where i've been deserted so that no man will go to me I become an eternal excellency a joy of many generations i'm like a well-watered garden i am planted in the house of god and i flourish in the courts of my god in old age i am fat and flourishing i'm like a tree that is planted by the riverside that yields its fruit in season whose leaf does not wither everything i do prospers everything i do prospers there is an auction upon my life that make things to work everything i do prospers
He reigns. He reigns. He is standing by my side to bring His word to pass. He reigns. He reigns. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. He is standing by my side to bring His word to pass. He reigns. He reigns. is an awesome. One more time. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. You are standing by my side. prayer point. Listen, the Bible says, even God who quickened the dead and called those things that be not as though they were. Called those things that be not as though they were. Called those blessings that be not as though they were. Called those favors that be not as though they were. Called those miracles Call it those connections. Call it those destiny helpers that be not as though they were. Call it those new levels that be not as though they were. Open your mouth and begin to prophesy. Call them into your life. I call for destiny helpers. Pray. I call for prosperity. I call for increase. I call for favor. Call it forth. By the power of the Holy Ghost, you have an anointing upon you. Call it forth. Call for that miracle ministry. Call for that healing ministry. Call for those new levels of the prophetic, new levels of the apostolic, new levels of increase. Call for that direction. For the new level of life. Call for those ideas. Call for those strategies. For the next level. Call for those connections. hallelujah let's add one more prayer point listen the bible says if thou shall say not if thou shall wish on the strength of your conviction if thou shall say to this mountain not any mountain a specific mountain if thou shall instruct it be lifted from hands and cast into the sea and he says you do not doubt in your heart you will receive you will have i like us to speak there seems to be challenges in different areas of our lives i'm not ignoring their presence i'm only telling you they can change right now open your mouth mention the mountains and tell them the lord rebuke you the lord rebuke you the creator the owner of the heavens and the earth go ahead migraine headache the Lord rebuke you poverty the Lord rebuke you delay I say to you be lifted and cast into the sea setbacks the Lord rebuke you
Come on, pray. Speak to that mountain. This favor, the Lord rebuke you. Stagnation, the Lord rebuke you. Barrenness, the Lord rebuke you. Cycles of failure, the Lord rebuke you. Hallelujah. Let's lift up our voices and as we bless him in the spirit. Spirit of the living God, we thank you. Open up your mouth and bless him in the spirit. The entrance of your word. Spirit of the living God, we bless you. Are you praying in the spirit? Your edifying your spirit, pray in the spirit. Your edifying your spirit. Low, low, low like a mighty spirit of victory.
presence of God is mighty in this place. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you first to God, second to the world. I commend you first to God, then second to the world. I commend you. I transfer responsibility for the results in your life first to God. Like you transfer a small child and say, from now, take care of him. And God is saying, Paul is speaking and say, I commend you first to God, to, to the word. It says that that word is able, hmm, is able, does not outsource power from any other place. In itself, it is able to build you up. Number one. Number two, it says it is able to give. The word can give things to men. It is able to build you up. Then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. It says, I commend you first to God. Then I commend you to the word. It says that that word is able to build you. To build you means to translate you. To take you to a dimension higher than your prior experience. And then as a reward for staying, it says it will give you an inheritance. Something provable. Something demonstrable. That everyone will know that this one would only have come if a man met God and met his word lift your voice in one minute and say lord i have come i have come to encounter god and encounter the world i trust in the ability of the world to build me it is able to build you up Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening. Please be seated. One of the things that I pray will continue to happen to us is that God by His Spirit will continue to grant us the comprehension of the value of the word of god in the life of a believer it's not enough to just believe that the word of god is god's word you must believe that the word of god contains within itself an ability and that the word of god is able to make men if received it says he came to his own and his own received him not then it says, but as many as received him. Anything received can be rejected. Is that true? As many as received him, even to them that believed on his name, the Bible says he gave them power to become. Power to become. Nobody is made by default. My brothers and my sisters, listen. Saul does not become Paul just by default. There is a system in the kingdom that makes men. There's nothing wrong with the way you come. Except that if you are willing to engage in the systems of the kingdom, then there is a guarantee that the word of God, God who is the owner of the word, and the word of God commended to you. You know, many times we talk about the word of God, the power of the word, but the truth is that we have not educated people enough to see the value in the word of God. Are we together now? Yes. The Bible says in John chapter 1, the gospel of John chapter 1, the Bible says in the beginning, listen, was the word. And it says the word was with God. Then it says the word was God. It says that he was with God in the beginning. Now here's the part. It says through him all things. How many things? now when the bible tells you something made everything you should respect it are we together now yes 
that all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made without him without the word was not anything made that was made without the word was not any destiny that was made without the word was not any life that was made without the word was not any man of god that was made that means when you have the word you have the ability to manipulate anything created by the word are we together now when the bible tells you he wants to give you what created the heavens and the earth it means that he's giving you access is a scepter of dominion that with this word when he grants it unto you then you will be able to tame life and operate at a dimension and at a frequency that will dumbfound principalities and powers now truthfully speaking it may take a while you see because God is not a magician it's a system that means your participation is required but that line upon line my brothers and my sisters let me give you a guarantee and I tell you this in the name of the Lord if you listen to the things that I teach you and you open up your heart in all sincerity to receive there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to put down your destiny it's a matter of time forget about the things you do not see and focus on what God is giving you what God is giving you is greater than any car you can buy trust me you must have something greater than material things to get material things you can't have something less than material things and then have these things God is if all God gives you now is a car and a house and money he cheated you he will give you something that will compel the gentiles to come to your light and even their kings to the brightness of your rising are we together now there is nothing in the bible that is a true blessing that is physical listen carefully there is nothing in the bible that is given physical like you give someone something physical you may call it a blessing but all blessings are spiritual all blessings the bible says that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings that reside in heavenly places and in christ we reign in this kingdom by the access to the light that we have unfortunately please pay attention especially for those outside unfortunately men are so result conscious that they understand spiritual things too late the system of the kingdom is such that until the tree is established before fruits come out so if all you are looking for is just result you may be you may miss a major part of the dealings of god God is working something in your life and there's still a rent issue waiting and then the devil will use manipulate because you see let me tell you this the domain of the senses is where Satan dwells he is the master of the sense realm he knows that the natural man is governed by the impulses the sensory perceptions that come from his environment so he will try to manipulate what is there or not there and use it to probe and discredit the integrity of what God is doing in your life if it is true you are receiving favor where is it and you stand and say boy it's true oh, Kai, God yourself I just finished seven days dry fasting and it was by the mercy of God I met my roommate almost finishing his Gary are we together now and the devil cheats you because he's a master of the sense realm but do you not know the Bible says while we look not at the things which are seen the things which are seen you don't look at them but you can look at the things that are unseen because the things that are seen are temporal say temporal poverty temporal low levels in the spirit temporal he said but the things that are unseen they are eternal so we must be spiritual and by spiritual it means that we use the word of god as our new plane 
our perception becomes a derivative of the integrity of God's word not our experiences your experience at this level does not capture enough to prove that God is faithful so if you depend on your experiences you will see gaps in supposed gaps in the faithfulness of God you will see obvious things God did not do supposedly so you take your mind your life is too small to just try to create a system of vetting God's integrity you use the word of God and say Lord my life may not have a B and C yet but I know from the integrity of your word that you do not fail and not even my own experience is enough to discredit your integrity you have cheated Satan when you get to that level because Satan will never be able to manipulate you until he uses something that is obvious in your life where is the money if you say God is faithful where is the anointing you are a man of God and you claim God has raised you to be a prophet to the nations in one year nobody invited you for anything is it really true that the hand of God is at work in you where are the Gentiles that should come to your light at first you will claim you have faith but the reality of the lack of demand on your grace will sit down and discourage you and he said am I called or what if it's a demonic attack let me know and repent and just find somewhere but I mean am I called and God says just listen to me but if you continue staying my brothers and my sisters one day it will do you like a dream you will wake up one day into a dimension of the spirit that you will have to step back and join others to say Lord what is this and then men will say like they always say he came out of nowhere and God will say keep quiet nobody comes out of nowhere he says meditate on these things give yourself wholly to them if if you give yourself halfway hoping so that if it fails at least you can put your leg somewhere it, it doesn't work like that let me tell you you throw yourself in this thing and say if i perish i perish this this scientific christianity i know god is faithful but let me patch him with an uncle so one leg is here one leg so that whatever happens your ego is not stung and that very ego is why you may never see the power of god because you have not proven to god that you have thrown all to him and you just come and say god if you don't help me i don't have an option god says this is what i like now that you have stepped aside let me show you that i'm a great god are we blessed tonight i commend you to god and to the word of his grace that is able to build you you know most believers don't know why the church is mandated to meet frequently even pastors most men of god don't know why they hold weekly fellowships others think we hold weekly fellowships so that at least there will be resources to run the ministry um, for for the week or the month because every time people gather they drum the fact that you shouldn't come before God empty-handed so they think that the regular convergence of believers is just a system of generating revenue for the church it may not be entirely true the regular convergence of believers is a system designed in the intelligence of God It's one of the ways that the church is built one of the ways that the church matures because every time we gather together among the many things that happen number one there is an opportunity for an encounter with the spirit of god that's entirely spiritual are we together now and then number two an opportunity to learn the ways of god to learn the ways of god life will not excuse you for what you do not know life treats those who disobey and those who don't know in the same category i'm passionate about what i do not know i'm passionate about the danger i may submit myself to not knowing what i should know and so my heart is always panting to find out lord thank you for what you have shown me but what else do i not know if you do not know look at me for instance if i'm standing at the edge of this stage and i do not even know that there is a depression here that can throw me down i'm just shifting innocently the depression will not think that just because i'm not aware it will not touch me i will fall and it can kill me is that true 
so when someone tells you hey hold on when you get here stand that knowledge has delivered you is that true so we come for a convergence like this because it is an opportunity for god to expose us to the ways of god and then it is an opportunity to experience the power of god in the midst of his people is 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 not going to be possible to present a god that you have not tasted of the possibilities that are contained in him it's one thing to know that the possibilities of god are encapsulated in this bible but it's another thing for your life to at least have a taste of it you don't need to experience everything but that god does something in your life that you can now say kai god now i know i know so the next time you are talking to someone and says which god you say no forget about the apostle look at my life i'm now a testimony an epistle that god is able to do this and that hallelujah there is a spirit that makes believers to not focus on the ministry of the word the spirit of distraction you can even come to church and you'll be surprised that just because you are sitting and looking you are learning no the bible says that the sower sows the word right there satan is in the midst of of, of god's people roaming around and looking for careless hearts and he comes by himself and takes the word so that you are ever learning oh this topic ah i know it i remember genesis chapter this verse this but there is no evidence that shows that this has become spirit and life in you so please let's challenge ourselves and say lord it is true that i don't serve you just for results but lord i'm determined I'm determined to begin to see your hand in my life if you see God's hand in one two three areas and remaining four five six you are encouraged but where you get zero over six of God's hand is not enough testimony are we together it is the Word of God that builds it is the Word of God that gives men allocations in this kingdom like a domain and the word of god allocates you come darling and says you stand here come my dear stand here come this is your place of dominion you have believed in me enough the word of god gives you your allocation in life so this person starts somewhere and god says there is a seat i have given you in the prophetic and the word of god gives you that position you stay there and you know it's an office backed up by god himself no man will be able to stand against you this one was apportioned by the spirit as a testimony not of your desire for ministry listen as a testimony of your staying power with god for as a prince you have power with god you can roam around and say god has called me into business life drives you out you come again and say um, God called me into family and you roam around life and there is no space for you. He dug a well, they came and covered it. They say it's not your space. He dug another well, they covered it. When he dug the first one, they gave him space and he called it Rehoboth. He said, God has given me my own space. You need to have your own place in life. Dominion is territorial. Until you find your jurisdiction of dominion, you cannot begin to walk in it. You will hate people you will be angry you will quarrel people you will hate others that god is blessing in their area of dominion it is the word of god that allocates while the word of god is being taught mystery after mystery principle after principle the spirit of god is using the word to give men spiritual jurisdictions of power and relevance and so this lady hears that god is distributing this and then the call of God upon her life locates her in the place of the call. And this one hears that God is lifting people in the area of business and God keeps her there. And by the time these people have been around God for a long time, you look at them and you see the grace of their office established in that dimension. 
this roaming around of believers without knowing the jurisdiction of your spiritual relevance is dangerous because satan can also mimic god and carry you somewhere that the equipping the wiring the spiritual configuration within you should not it does not allow you to be there and so they carry you and you die because you want to prophesy are we together now because the word of god did not give you the balance and the proper allocation your ego allocated you to a dimension you don't have grace for every prophecy you lied every prophetic command never came to pass and you find out you are frustrated and you stand and say lord what am i doing with my life I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you egg, lava, pupa, adult and then when you are now mature to give you a space are you getting what I'm saying now? an allocation yes you're a medical doctor but I give you a space that you will carry the healing anointing to the nations you may be a doctor professionally but your destiny demands that you are working in this. How you know you are making progress in the spirit is that somewhere along the lines of your experience, you begin to see these spiritual allocations. You can know. God, where are you taking me to? Just follow. It first starts as a general prayer. It first starts as just studying the word of God to know him. Let me tell you, there is nobody that God puts ministry consciousness in him before he calls him. That's wrong training. The, you start on a neutral ground. Lord, I love you. I need your presence. I need your glory. Not I need a church. Not I need a title. Not I need a PA. Not Lord, I've suffered in this family. Won't I be rich? No, sir. God does not define the geography of men's assignments first. He allows them to begin to seek him on a neutral ground. And then on, on grounds of their faithfulness, when their hearts are locked to him, then the spiritual jurisdiction of their assignment, he starts to allocate it. And many times, depending on the jurisdiction, there are jurisdictions that will necessitate that you touch other dimensions before finally getting there. So God is calling you into an apostolic ministry, but you will start as an evangelist. For two years, you will be an evangelist. And then you will switch and be a teacher. And then you will be like a missionary. The final destination is here. By the time you build a camp there, I am evangelist Emeka. By the time that apostolic grace is coming, you will cause confusion. Because you are among evangelists, but they know that what you are doing is not evangelism. And you will start teaching based on your experience and you will start saying the rest are wrong whereas it was your staying power in the training to allow you get to the final destination please place value on the word of god place value on the not just the reading of the word you have been reading it place value on its ability to give you something in life look let me tell you this if I am your physical father and I have a little estate and you are waiting for me to die so that they can they can share the um, what they call it get the death benefit and share the money listen to what I'm trying to say the physical land and the territory you have can be seized by the government as simple as that they just say we need it and we will think of what to do another government will say it was not me the past government has gone and never will come forever but when god gives you a spiritual inheritance no man no tribe they may hate you but my brothers and my sisters when a key is given to you the key is given in a way and a manner that god will cause nations to pass through that door it's impossible to ignore you these are the truths i have found there is rest when you find this All this fear up and down. How will my future be? Will I be great? Will I eat? Will my children eat? Those questions were designed to be answered naturally when you follow the pace of God's training. There are many questions we ask now. There are questions because we are jumping classes. If you stay with God, there are some questions you will not need to ask. 
believe me the kind of questions you ask will tell you what kind of student you are when you are a proper student the responsibility of the spirit of god no there there you won't even know when you enter certain dimensions that others are praying for because your heart is with him and you're saying lord guide me curriculum after curriculum no rushing no comparison i stay with you five years others have moved forward they have jobs and they have this and you are moving around like a thief across the earth and say lord what am i god say you you are my son at least know that one for now even if you don't know what i called you to do behold what manner of love what what is greater than that one lord help me who am i i'm moving around like cain and god says don't let the devil cheat you just walk with me and in one year god will look at you and establish you with a grace and people will look at you and say ah, ah, i used to know pastor femi unfortunately you used to know him that he has died died in training and resurrected with another life the son of man in power and glory he passed through a doorway in the spirit called galatians 2 20. now he has come out with a new light a new grace are we learning something already God bless you bless you guys thank you we must have passion for the word of God I will touch a bit on something that I thought I would have the allowance to preach this year in fact when the Lord put this in my heart I said oh Lord but I've cried to you again and again to allow me preach this and um, I honestly thought we'll be able to have the series um, but maybe tonight I may just do a little introduction on it um, it's very powerful very powerful Kai. God thank you thank you There are things when you find in this kingdom please listen to me there are things when you find in this kingdom god hell and men will know you found something there are things when you find only god will know you found it there are things when you find only men will know but there are things when you find god men hell will know but by his grace you have been given something and this is what i'm guiding you to understand do you know what i'm doing to you i'm reconstructing your understanding about god and the correct approach to life now you may not see the value in what you are receiving now but my brothers and my sisters give god time and be patient with yourself and watch the wonder that you become So tonight i will just do an introduction of it true riches just an introduction it's not part one we have a series next we we'll, would we'll, we'll transfer it to next year but and and don't think i'm talking about money at all settle down and listen and let god bless you because when we hear riches the first thing we think about because of the way i don't know if it's the way our country is, is going all the way you know once people just hear riches a lot of people are very happy this is a very spiritual teaching in fact riches is really spiritual luke chapter 16 and verse 11 luke chapter 16 and verse 11 read with me believers one two read Ah, that's not you be delivered from let's read one more time one to read uh-huh hold on it's a question who will commit to you so this one is not an achievement people commit it to you listen who will commit to 
to your trust the true riches unfaithful mammon the word unfaithful suggests instability is that true something that is not reliable and it says that if you are not faithful with the, in your righteous mammon who will commit to your trust when i saw this scripture it blessed and changed my life who will commit to your trust true riches there's something in this kingdom called true riches and the bible says that the basis for access to it among other things is faithfulness listen very carefully and then that this dimension of spiritual blessings that the bible calls true riches is a commitment meaning that god observes and sees your faithfulness listen carefully he can allow you to do whatever it is that you're doing but whilst you're doing it he's observing you and that you get to a point where you pass that spiritual test and like a report card god calls you and says i give you something called true riches and he says that if you are unfaithful with unrighteous mammon who will commit to you that means aside from god who else has that access he's not just trying to tell you the, he's saying who else who else can commit to you this mystery that we call true riches thank you ephesians chapter 3 we'll read from verse 2 to 8 listen very carefully and you understand something powerful tonight paul is speaking now if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of god which is given me to you word verse 3 how that by revelation listen he made known unto me what the mystery by revelation he made known i didn't search it out he brought it and gave it to me as i wrote a four in few words we are reading to verse 8 verse 4 whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ five which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit six that the gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in christ by the gospel seven wherefore i was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of god given to me by the effectual working of his power eight <laughs> listen it says unto me paul now paul is looking at the excellency of what he has found and saying lord do i deserve this listen it says unto me who am less than the least of all the saints is this grace so it's a grace is this grace given what is the grace that i should preach among the gentiles help me the unsearchable riches not just the gospel that i should preach the unsearchable unfathomable riches look at the description that is used there he didn't say that i should preach the gospel that i should preach they, they are mysteries the bible says there is a grace that this grace can operate in a man and grant him uncommon understanding to these mysteries that the bible calls the unsearchable riches of christ these are very deep spiritual things listen and these are the spiritual blessings by which the dominion of the saints is established upon the earth that the dominion of the saints is not just established because all things have you know you have dominion no no prophetically the dominion of the church has been established but in experience we are yet to come into the fullness of that understanding Paul was speaking to the church, the Hebrew church, and he told them, he says, he was quoting Psalm, Psalm 8, you know, that you have put all things under his feet and all of that, and he says, but we do not yet see all things. The unsearchable riches of Christ. What is it? 
if I ask you define for me because this is in the Bible this is the Pauline epistle what is the unsearchable riches of Christ money business Naira and Kobo no sir may God open your eyes it is an introduction tonight but may God open your eyes to see it my brothers and my sisters these are the commanders of dominion these are the systems allocated for the dominion of the saints the bible calls it true riches that men there is a grace that god by observation seeing your faithfulness this one you can never find it it's not just by fasting and praying it's not just by reading a book god comes to you as a reward for faithfulness and grants you a grace that opens you up to a mystery called the unsearchable riches of christ this is what the bible calls true riches what is it that's why paul paul was remember paul said i thank my god i pray in tongues more than ye all so paul would be lying if he told us he was spiritually lazy that man was very diligent in the spirit and when it came to this description paul was even broken seeing the level and the gravity of the spiritual investment made upon his life he acknowledged that unto me who am less than the least of the saints was this grace given that i should be the custodian to release this unsearchable mystery to the body until paul came no man had seen it not even the eye of those who walked with jesus they walked with jesus they saw many spiritual things but their eyes could not see this dimension and that's why paul said i didn't see him in the flesh i was i was i was a murderer out somewhere when jesus was i was not even part of the 70 and god just picked a young man on his way to damascus a donkey falls down he knocks me and calls me and says i want to give you i want to allocate space for you in this dispensation that you are mandated to be the custodian the dispenser that's why he started by saying look when my teachings are hard don't criticize me there is a grace i received it god came to me by revelation and opened up to me this thing and he calls the name the caption of it is the unsearchable riches of I have cried and cried and told the Lord to take away useless knowledge from my life that means profitless knowledge both for me and for the saints that God will grant me access to light and truths that are useful to help men and help my generation first to know him and then to be able to walk in the experience of his life it's been my prayer it still is my prayer and so when the Lord opened me up to this I was so blessed let me tell you sincerely and and God is my witness and I tell you this I'm a, I'm a student I'm not ashamed when I learn things from people and I build you know I'm not I'm not somebody who is is, is, is arrogant to say all this and that I ha I'm a product of many 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 spiritual minds but when it came to these dealings the way I look at you is the same way God was opening me up to the world. See this. This is the key. The mystery that connects to this. And many times when I listen to people, fathers of faith, and I hear them teach, I say, God, this is what you were telling me. I say, because I'm the one who told them to. Not everything in your life will come by studies. I'm not teaching you to be lazy. But we're teaching, we're teaching, this is, this, is, this is a school of the spirit. Not everything in your life will come by studies and lecture. My brothers and my sisters, there are different ways God imparts knowledge to us. One of it is through the stillness of your spirit. Be still and know that I am God. And one of it is access, revelation, spiritual illumination. God just comes to you and grants you access there are things i know today i don't know how i got it the same way you receive a prophetic word i just know that this came to me
what are these unsearchable riches right these are the spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth these spiritual blessings these unsearchable riches what you call true riches they are spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth and manifest the reality of God's life here and now the spiritual blessings that provide an advantage there has to be a system in our dealings with God where we stand at an edge where we sustain an advantage it is not it is not something hidden that life is harsh my brothers and my sisters listen to me it is no secret that ministry without a spiritual advantage is simply a human pursuit of frustration men are not that kind to allow you excel without the assistance of the spirit realm mm -mm. from tribal sentiments to the gates of hell and their manipulations etc etc everything looks like it's against you you only rise and reign in life to the degree to which you sustain a spiritual advantage are we together now yes um come come doctor if you ask us to push ourselves and he's standing here he's already in a vulnerable position and then you provide a system of support and i'm standing here and someone is holding me these things are my advantage is that true now even if he's stronger than me if he tries to push me on the strength of these factors you see that i will get a dimension of results that is unfair because that's not the true reflection of my capability i have trusted systems that have provided an advantage and the bible tells us that these unsearchable riches they were designed by god as a proof of his love and his determination to see that the saints reign so he put together these systems so that by them we can stand strong and shout at the gates of hell and know that there is a spiritual fortification it is ultimately god that gives us victory my brothers and my sisters but the victory is broken into systems so you can know that god has given you victory and not understand the systems he provided and you find out that your life consistently continues to be a disadvantage are we together now bless you thank you so true riches i define are spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth and to manifest the reality of god's life here and now we're just doing an introduction romans chapter 5 and verse 17 the bible says that they which have received the abundance of grace everybody say the abundance of grace the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness it says they shall reign in life they shall reign in life they shall reign in life this is what validates the fact that we are kings revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 to 10 revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 to 10 and they sung a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof for thou was slain and has redeemed them should be it's a mistake there because these are the four and twenty elders redemption was not for them so they are speaking over the saints so the word us there is a mistake in translation redeem them to god by thy blood out of every kindred listen now every tongue every people every nation verse 10 and has made us now them you understand and has made us unto our god what kings and priests and the bible says and we shall reign where on earth 
So God's dominion agenda is real. He wants us to reign. He wants us to manifest a dimension of the multifaceted possibilities that are resident in the Christ. Now, I hope you understand. Let's, let's refresh ourselves with redemption realities that Jesus Christ came and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Then he says that no man cometh to the Father except by me. Is that true? So Jesus is the door to the kingdom. He is the only, not even just many, he is the only valid access point into the life of the Spirit. You can manipulate through all the routes into a life of spiritism. But if you want to access the kingdom life, Jesus is the authorized channel, not even an angel. Are we together now? And then the Bible lets us know that the, the, the system that makes for salvation, Romans chapter 8, when you, 10, when you read from verse 8 to 10, you know, the Bible says that you confess with your heart the Lord Jesus, you believe, you will mouth the Lord Jesus, you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you are saved. The moment you get born again, watch this. What does it mean to be saved, as it were, to receive new life? Very simple. The Bible says that there is a translation. But much more than a translation, the Bible lets us know that this divine life, the life we call Zoe, known by men as eternal life, but it's more than eternal life. It is God's life, a quality, not the kind, the very life of God. Are we together now? The Bible says by the ministry of the Holy Spirit that that life is supplanted we are refreshing ourselves now upon the human spirit so that he that becomes joined to Christ now becomes one spirit. It's a mystery known in ancient times as the salt covenant where two people wanting to enter an inseparable relationship bring salt. All of them bring samples of their salt and they mix it together. The condition for separation is that everyone must pick his salt. Are you seeing that now? Yes. Another example I've taught you is called the doctrine of interpenetration. This is the mystery of marriage. The mystery by which two people become one. Right? So, a separate entity called a man. Another separate entity called a woman. By covenant, they become one. One, not physically, but one in the spirit. Recognized by God himself. Are we together now? That's why the Bible says, let no man do asunder. It put asunder. It's a warning because there are implications in the realm of the spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So man receives of that life, Zoe, the spirit of God. And then among the many things that, are, that happen to man is that your capacity to now begin to comprehend spiritual things is quickened still by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And then the operation of the word, the logos, and the operation of the spirit of God begin in your life. You begin to learn the ways of God and then the word of God begins to wash you. Huh? Like you wash a cloth. Begins to purify your conscience and then your mind is educated again. The light is driving out that darkness. And gradually, gradually by all those exercises, conformity and transformation, not impartation yet, conformity and transformation. These things will remain for a very long time in your life. And then you begin to see the grace speaking. Are we together now? Because grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge. So it's a laborious assignment because not everything in your mind is of the devil. There are things that are correct. So God will not reset your mind. And then he will do that only with your permission. So it's possible to be transformed one degree in 10 years. That's how slow you wanted God to take you. Are we together now? So you find out that after 10 years, the level of results that should accrue to a life that was diligent with God is not showing in your life. God is limited by your yieldedness, limited by your alignment. This is what now begins to separate believers into different cadres. And then of course now you bring the issue of the election of grace. People who by his predetermined counsel, he has called into certain offices and dimensions. Usually God will do an unusual work in them. 
are we together now a work many times that is more than their personal yieldedness that's why they can't take credit for it it was an acceleration that came because of the assignment they are to provide so they enter dimensions of the prophetic way before they start understanding what prophecy is the only thing they have to do is correct their errors not pray for new visions they have been seeing it since it's just that they have been interpreting nonsense so what they are repenting of is not it's not it's not a hazy vision there are people who even they got born again and there and then they started seeing visions there and then others came from priesthood a wrong key forced the door to, you, you understand what i mean a wrong key of spiritism and tradition opened a wrong door i hope you know that if you meet a native doctor and he opens your eyes even when you get born again the eyes will not close again it's been opened mm. the only thing is you will hand over the lordship of that sight to god are you getting what i'm saying now because there is a spirit that becomes the gateway of your access I, believers are you learning something yes to you it looks like you are just seeing visions no there is a spirit that grants you access to that gateway and there is an exchange that happens that you are not aware for being granted access to see things in the spirit and you are routing by a wrong door you will not know because it's subtle after 10 years you find out that your soul has truly been sold to the devil are we together now so when you get born again it's true that your eyes were open with the charm you will stop seeing the demons that oppressed you but the realm of the spirit is already open to you it's true systems of advantage that believers can access and god can grant them grace maybe let me just touch on two or three of them at least we'll, we'll still do them next year the unsearchable riches these are the things that when i look at in my life sometimes i just get down my knees and i say god thank you thank you you don't owe me anything you have been faithful i found them and they are very powerful can i give you the first one the first of these true riches this mystery is called the goodness of God the goodness of God what is this you will know now that it is that grace that is released on you if this grace is not present you cannot have conscience it is the goodness of God that is responsible to plant the need for repentance in men not mercy mercy has its place the goodness everything i'm telling you i'll show you from the bible you will now see why god told moses it is my goodness i will allow you to see my goodness the goodness of god allows for conviction of wrongs and repentance but the goodness of god also allows for continual repentance the word repent is not for sinners i've told you this it's not a word that is just left for sinners it's a kingdom expression a system of consistent realignment to a greater dimension of god's glory it's called repentance let's look at a very serious scripture romans chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 just write it down and let's read we're bible students romans 2 one to four ready i will tell you where to join me in the reading therefore thou art inexcusable O man whosoever thou art that judgest listen now carefully he's talking about judgment for wherein thou judgest another thou condemnest thyself for thou that judges does the same things too but we are sure that the judgment of god is according to truth against them which commit such things three and thinkest thou this O man that judges them which do such things and doest the same that thou shalt escape the judgment of god now look at verse 4 read with me please or despised thou the what riches hold on stop let's not rush despised thou the remember we're talking of true riches we're fishing them out now 
that there is something called the riches of his goodness what does it do and forbearance and long suffering not knowing that the goodness of god leaded thee to repentance if you ever repent it is the goodness of god that came to you it's not something you did by your strength to say oh i think I... no the the fortitude to realize the need for alignment is proof that god has been good to you this is the bible it says it is one of the two riches given to the saints the riches of god's goodness hmm. are we still together tonight did you know that the riches of god or the goodness of god is one of the true riches of the kingdom many people just ah oh god when the bible says surely goodness we quote it every time surely goodness and mercy as if we are singing a special number this is a very deep mystery if the goodness of god does not go with you i will tell you i will show you people from the bible the state of a man who has not been granted access to these riches you will see what happens when god looks at people jesus looks and says you are poor in spirit that they are bankrupt he knew what he was saying they had food in their houses but there were certain attributes of the the advantage of god given to the saints it's not there in their life let me show you first timothy chapter 4 and verse 2 this is a portrait of men who have not been granted access to the riches of god's goodness read with me one to read speaking lies in hypocrisy uh-huh having their conscience seared with a hot iron do you know what this means that means you have lost the ability to recognize this is what happens to a man who can carry a knife and tear a pregnant woman bring out a child and kill the person and by the next day he's moving and smiling let me tell you what that person needs is not revival what that person needs is not even mercy what that person needs is the goodness one of the two riches sent like an errand once the goodness of god meets that person he breaks down immediately true riches the unsearchable riches of christ so god looks at men and sends his goodness to them and all of a sudden you see men translating from level to level and they do not know what spiritual mystery is responsible for it keep that scripture again please romans 2 and verse 4 the riches of his goodness not just his goodness the riches the wealth you see that a man who had this was david david knew the goodness of god that's why he became a man after god's heart lucifer didn't have this if Luce, no no demon has this lucifer was not given the privilege of accessing the goodness of god so repentance is in it it's not that he doesn't want to do it has he not been watching believers get born again in crusade grounds why didn't he say god i've watched this thing for a long time let's talk you are my creator no it is the goodness of god that allows men to ever see the need for repentance hmm. evangelists pray for this if you are going for crusades don't just pray for signs oh god let them know i was called mm -mm. pray intelligently lord let there be a supply of the riches of your goodness and you will watch the wonder this is what happens in redemption camp when papa Ia Deboe preaches a simple message and says i will count one to five one and you see people run they don't even know what is bringing them out this is what the generals had charles g finney are we together now they had this in in very abundant measures they understood this wealth of the kingdom called the goodness of god when we say the goodness of god we just mean his ability to be benevolent it's more than that the primary assignment of the goodness of god is to create awareness of the need to realign so that we become better reflectors of his glory the bible calls it his goodness 
second peter chapter 3 and verse 9 is somebody learning something tonight he says who shall commit to you if god opens your eyes and you see it and engage it then your life will change the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering to us what not willing that any man perish but that all should come to repentance this is god's willingness so he sees our family members and he already knows that the way they are going their lives can never reflect god and then his goodness some of you it was the goodness of god that brought you here to koinonia not invitation it was the goodness of god that gave you access to the teachings because god designed that you come to repentance first of salvation and then consistently realigning your life and then you see the beauty and the glory of god come out of your life say the unsearchable riches of christ hmm. let's try another So the goodness of God is an advantage in my life. An advantage. An advantage. What is the advantage? Causing me to consistently realign. So that I get to a point where my life becomes like the brightness of the sun. And people say, ah, ah what happened? And you say, God has been good to me. Now, the carnal man will think what you are saying is, God gave me favor. You understand what I'm saying? Or God made a helper. Or like our dear sister shared, God made somebody to give me miracle Allah. that's true but what really happened was that he caused you to repent to align so that his glory can better find expression in your life the riches of his goodness the next time you see stubborn and rebellious people in your house the key is not counseling the key is intercession for a solid encounter with the goodness of God I, I got to hear a very touching testimony of some of these are young people who are very stubborn and the family collected a loan trusting God to help them to start a life and the the young boy and his friend true story they went to carry the car of the the car of the the friend's father you know all these boys that carry cars just to explore their their um, whatever it is and this one would drive and park and give this one to drive and park they were changing and then when it was the turn you see how the devil you see when the goodness of him it was now the turn of the young boy who came from a poor family whose parents now collected loan thinking it to help them start life and the young boy it was his turn he was driving a car of his friend's father and there came a big truck it was a miracle that the boy survived and the family said i'm not hearing anything just get my car and bring for me that was how they had to look for uh, these are people like counsel they had to add an extra look for money because it got to the police station and all of that you see that kind of thing and you will see the boy he will pass as if he gave his parents a word for taking first the goodness of god is not there that sense of remorse he has put the family in in trouble that it would take the prophetic to bring them out not business this one you can't come out just by business acumen it's going to take god to come and lift you out and yet you see the boys moving around and i was just looking at him and he was looking around no remorse look at armed robbers that kill people in the night and by the next morning they pass the same house they rob and you see them smiling during crisis the people that kill people do they die suddenly they are alive they pass a house that they know i'm the reason for the obituary in this house and then they pass and laugh they have not encountered the goodness of god let me tell you it's not good to see somebody who has not partaken of the grace of the goodness of god they are the people we call heartless conscienceless like some of the corrupt people that steal the money of nigerians this is what they need are we together now number two hmm. 
Proverbs chapter 5, chapter 4, from 5 to 9. The second of the unsearchable riches is wisdom. Don't assume you know what I'm teaching. Just listen. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 5. 1, 2, read. Question, where? Get pure water. Where? Um, shop. Are we together? Get pounded yam and soup. Where? Restaurant. Get injection for malaria. Where? Hospital. Get wisdom. Where? It's not that I don't want to get it. Where is it? Where do they find it? It says get wisdom. Then get understanding. They go together. All through scripture. You see this. Now, um, next year I'm going to be teaching you spiritual operations. And one of it will be how spirits work. Is They are all dimensions of the Holy Spirit. But you will notice that there are classifications. There is an operation of the Holy Spirit that never works as a person. Do you understand? It, it must be in twin, working that way. It was the mystery that Jesus used in sending the disciples. He sent them two by two. Never sent them one. Everywhere you see wisdom, from Genesis to Revelation, you will see understanding going with them. And then sometimes they can form a tag team, knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Three of them. A threefold cord that whoever stands in the middle it's only God that can take him out. When you stand in the middle of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, a fortification has been built that nothing designed by man can break that defense. Stronger than the wall of Jericho. It says, get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not. We're reading to verse 9. Listen carefully. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Uh -huh. Forsake her not. The Bible personifies wisdom. And she shall preserve thee, love her, and she shall keep thee. Seven. Wisdom is the principal thing. It says, therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, see it now again, get understanding. Now see the benefits. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. You know what honor is? Causing men to discern, acknowledge, and celebrate your relevance. The Bible says wisdom is in the office of wisdom to bring honor to men. When thou dost embrace her, last verse, it says she shall give to thy head an ornament of grace. You said you are a king, but where is your crown? Wisdom is the holder of the crown. It says she shall give a crown of glory. It is through wisdom we find glory. A king without a crown is not a king. In ancient times when they defeated cities, they not only removed the crown of the king, they removed his whole head and walked with it back to their city. A, a symbol. The moment the king was captured and his head taken, nobody fights again. The battle was over. And now the Bible says that the wisdom shall give you a crown of glory. I can say I am a king, but where is my crown? That there is a spiritual blessing that holds the crown of those who will reign in this life. And the Bible says it is called wisdom. Proverbs chapter 8 is going to be a long reading. Be patient with me. Be patient with me. I want us to pray tonight. These are the systems that will make your life worth living will make your life meaningful by every standard proverbs chapter 8 dot not wisdom cry look at how merciful god is to the extent that wisdom now goes around looking the bible says wisdom is crying crying because of the foolishness of men and what their lives are becoming as a result of lack of accessing her it says an understanding are you seeing them together 
wisdom is crying understanding is adding her voice next verse reading to the end two she standed in the top of high places by the way in the places of the paths. three let's hurry up she cried at the gates the place of exchange where men enter and go out wisdom says don't pass without me don't return without me at the entry of the city at the coming eat at the doors for unto you O men i call wisdom is speaking and my voice is to the sons of man oh ye simple simple there does not mean humble simple means unwise meaning there is there is no fortitude for comprehension it says understand wisdom and ye fools be of an understanding heart here for i will speak excellent things and the opening of my lips shall be right things seven for my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips eight all the words of my mouth are in righteousness and there is nothing forward and perverse in them they are all plain to him that understandeth, and right to them that find knowledge receive my instruction and not silver hold on if i give you wisdom and i give you silver wisdom says please don't be foolish to choose silver leave silver fast and come to me and knowledge rather than choice gold for wisdom is better than rubies two things the bible says are better than rubies one wisdom to a virtuous woman and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it uh-huh i wisdom dwell with prudence and find out the knowledge of witty inventions i hope we have the grace to continue the fear of the lord is to hate evil pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do i hate counsel is mine and sound wisdom i am understanding i have strength please read by the spirit this is what i want you to do. now wisdom is giving you a manifesto like a gentleman trying to ask a lady out and he's trying to convince her and give her reasons to say yes to him and he's saying by me kings reign if you see any king reigning on earth this is what enthroned him wisdom you see any king reigning in business in ministry it's not just god wisdom by me kings reign and princes decree justice 16 by me princes rule and nobles even all the judges of the earth i love them that love me and those who seek me early will find me that means it's not cheap to find wisdom he gives you a time to seek riches and honor you see why he said you should not choose silver because riches and honor are with me yea durable riches and righteousness my fruit is better than gold yea than fine gold and my revenue than choice silver i lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment will soon be there that i may cause those that love me to inherit talk to me i cause those who love me to inherit substance there is not money substance there is results tangibility i will fill their treasures go ahead the lord possessed me so this is how creation happened through wisdom a house is built wisdom is saying the lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old next verse I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was when there was no depths i was brought forth when there were no fountains abounding with water before the mountains were settled before the hills was i brought forth while as yet he had not made the earth nor the fields nor the highest part of the dust of the world when he prepared the heavens i was there 
when he set a compass upon the face of the depth when he established the clouds above when he strengthened the fountains of the deep when he gave the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment when he appointed the foundations of the earth three more verses or two then i was by him ah, as one brought up with him and i was daily his delight rejoicing always before him rejoicing in the habitable parts of the earth and my delight were with the sons of men last verse now therefore unto me O ye children hearken to me O ye children for blessed are they that keep my ways wisdom one of the unsearchable riches that people can possess wisdom and he's saying even god used me for his results that means you are not going to be able to produce any kind and any dimension of result without wisdom what is wisdom the ability to correctly engage the mysteries of the kingdom not the knowledge of it not the comprehension of it the ability to correctly engage the mysteries of the kingdom is called wisdom what is wisdom the ability to use the word to produce supernatural results that's wisdom my brothers and my sisters i can show you scriptures upon scripture we're doing an introduction today supernatural wisdom that happened to men they rose on account of that wisdom let's look at one scripture first kings chapter 3 solomon god's portrait of wisdom you see that every once and again these men obtain one or more of these attributes and that's what they used to do business in the earth realm and they they dumbfounded the wisdom of men first kings chapter 3 and verse 9 we're reading to verse 13 from verse 9 solomon is praying now god is asking him what should i do and he says give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that i may discern between good and bad for who is able to judge this thy so great a people verse 10 and the speech pleased the lord that solomon had asked this thing to 13 and god said to him because thou hast asked this thing and hast not asked for thyself what long life neither hast thou asked here it is again unfaithful mammon riches for thyself nor hast thou asked the life of thy enemies but thou hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment 12 behold i have done according to thy words let's see what god gave him i have given 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 i have given thee a wise and an understanding heart so that there was none like thee before thee neither after thee shall rise on any unto thee i have also given thee that which thou hast not asked both riches and honor so that there shall not be any among the kings you see that every time kings were there wisdom understanding go to chapter 4 from verse 29 go to chapter 4 and verse 29 chapter 4 first kings and verse 29 read with me please one to read and god gave go ahead solomon wisdom uh-huh and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart even as the sun that is on the seashore the manifesto the attributes of all this spiritual blessing next verse and solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of egypt uh-huh for he was wiser than all men than Ethan the Ezraite, than Heman, than Kalkol, than Dada, all these guys 
are champions of wisdom they were noted for walking in strange dimensions of wisdom and his fame was in all nations round about 32 for he spake three thousand proverbs and his songs were a thousand and five worship team you see how songs come an encounter with the spirit of wisdom believe me one song that will cause the nations to bless you have you not seen that music artists write songs out of 50 they are like two three you know this is not human you know it by the way it lasts anything that is human has the characteristic of fading the moment time has no power over it it came from the realm of the spirit there are songs that were written when we were born and we're still singing it there were songs that were written last month we're tired of it it tells you the dimension it's not that there, there's something wrong with the song the dimension from which the song came if it is that which is of the earth is earthy that which is of heaven is heavenly 33 and he spake of trees from the cedar tree that is in lebanon even unto the high sop that springeth out of the wall he spake a lot he spake also of beasts and of fowls and of creeping things and fish i think there's one more verse and there came of all people to hear the wisdom of solomon from all kings of the earth does this look like gentiles shall come to thy light and they are kings to the brightness of your rising meaning there is what a man can possess my brothers and my sisters you may be in a shrine or you may be in a in a room that is made of mud blocks but kings will come when you possess what kings cannot buy they will come to you the last thing i'm going to do is to show you where wisdom stays because wisdom has a location job chapter 28 from verse 12 true riches when God wants to help a man he exposes you to the unsearchable riches of Christ when you possess them you will look weak and frail my brothers and my sisters but when you begin to engage these systems of the kingdom your life becomes a wonder you see do you know why I'm taking our time to teach you these things <clears throat> so that you are not afraid of your results when you don't know the basis of the results that God gives you, even that result will make you afraid because you are not sure of the system of defense around it. Are we together now? But where shall wisdom be found? Remember I asked us a question. He said, get wisdom. And I said, where? So Job now, the man of wisdom, wisest, richest, Job, is having a conversation where shall wisdom be found and where is the place of understanding have you seen that they always go together next verse man knoweth not the price thereof neither is it found in the land of the living ah where is the land of the living that means it's not found here it's not a commodity that is affordable in any market let no man deceive you that he knows where wisdom is found in this earth Mm -mm. it cannot be found the earth does not have the capacity to produce this it can produce Sophia human wisdom that is a derivative of trial and error and science but not the wisdom that comes from above the depth said it is not in me the sea said it is not with me that means all these things go back all these things are storage devices on earth they hide things the depth there are things that the depth keeps and those who know it can say bring it out that's why the prophet can stand and look at the ground and say oh earth he said let the people praise thee this earth is not barren let the people praise thee this earth will start yielding meaning that fruitfulness was hidden in the earth <sighs> no wonder seed time and harvest was tied in the similitude of the principle of the earth the earth hides fruitfulness water hides abundance you read your bible everything the birds of the air and everything came out of water and so they said the depth said it is not with me the sea said it is not with me next verse it cannot be gotten for gold 
neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof uh -huh. it cannot be valued with the gold of offer nor with the precious onyx nor the sapphire next verse the gold and the crystal cannot equal it and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold no mention shall be made of coral or of pearls for the price of wisdom is above rubies the topaz of ethiopia shall not equal it neither shall it be valued with pure gold 20. whence then cometh wisdom and where is the place of understanding he listed all the choice places in the earth where we can find treasurable things and he says that wisdom is not there seeing that it is hid from the eyes of all the living and kept close from the fowls of the air destruction and death say we have heard of his fame look at this destruction and death also give testimonies that they say we have even us we are still surprised as we destroy people and kill people we have noticed that whoever possesses this mystery escapes us freely he said we have heard of the fame thereof with our ears that means destruction is a spirit not an event it's a spirit it can come upon a family and leave out its characteristics good understanding god understanded the way thereof that's the secret only god understands the way and he knoweth the place thereof hmm. no just just stop at 23 god understanded the way that means if you ever see any man with that dimension of wisdom who gave him that's why i told you it is it is a grace this is not something you walk education cannot give it no when men possess this dimension of wisdom god gave it to men is one of the unsearchable riches of christ solomon possessed it and he did wonders ordinary men have been granted access to this mystery and you can see a very young frail person but carrying something ancient that was with God at creation and wisdom is justified by her children the results show you that this is not human my prayer is that somebody will will catch a dimension of this grace the wisdom of God that you will arise with it my brothers and my sisters and you will see Sheba and her bounties come to you that the things that you seek will come to you of their own accord believe me Satan has deceived us to chase after things God never designed that we chase after things these are the commanders of dominion when you possess them it is impossible there is a testimony even from the realm of the spirit you don't have to plan to be great you just possess this and watch what they do to you the bible says she shall bring thee in other words i can find wisdom from a small room and wisdom says follow me like peter following an angel i step into the place of great men and i say what am i doing here and wisdom says this is where i live whoever possesses me will live with me and you will eat the bread of kings because wisdom brought you there but how many people desire the wisdom of God so many people will tell you this is an interruption there are many men of God that will not focus listen many young Nigerians will not focus to listen to the wisdom of God just go all these pastors you are just lucky you are anointed you are anointed that's all let me hustle my life no sir no sir except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city the bible declares that the watchmen watched but in vain he said it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he giveth his beloved sleep when god gives you wisdom your eyes will see things and it will surprise you what god will make out of your life no man's anger and change what the wisdom of God does in your life let me tell you this learn this early in life whether people believe in you or not it has no effect whatsoever on the forces of the spirit working in your life if you ever look at a man holding 
this unsearchable riches of Christ your anger is just beginning you will be angry till you die it will not do anything because death is the last enemy to be destroyed so if death testifies that I've hands up then you two hands up quickly that is one of the forces that was upon a pale horse in Revelation one of the four horse riders and it gives up and says no this one is above my power and above my dimension wisdom knowledge maybe let me give us one last one the unsearchable riches of Christ true riches Are you ready? <laughs> the hearing ear. Listen. Access to the voice of God is one of the mysterious riches of the kingdom. The Bible says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit sayeth. The Spirit sayeth. The Bible says, the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times, are we together now? Some shall depart from the faith, he says, giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of demons. In The, the Spirit speaketh expressly. That means one of the greatest, you are at a point of advantage. The hearing ear has nothing to do with the prophetic office. It is a grace that God washes your ear with high eyes up so that you have the hearing ear. Is it not in your Bible that thou shall hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way. Why? Because there is a way that seemeth right if all ways were fair and right there would be no need for direction the hearing ear is a desperate prayer that everyone must cry unto God and say Lord as I'm starting ministry give me the ear that hears let me tell you this listen I have studied the church in Nigeria for many years I have studied the church in Africa I have studied men and women of God and respectfully so I am amazed at the way people move this way when the Holy Ghost moved that way and their ministries ended overnight not sin not disobedience but that the Spirit of God is going because the anointing goes where the Spirit is going wherever the voice of God is that's where his power is so if God's voice and power is going left and you are going right even if it's sincerely so that's the end of it my brothers and my sisters let me tell you your spiritual investment of 20 years can crash in one day if you are not given the gift of a hearing ear you will appreciate this in years to come the higher you rise in ministry the more desperate you must cry Moses said don't send us from here Moses was not a fool with a rod in his hand thy rod and thy staff he said no way if you will know i need to know you are there just because god said move left yesterday does not mean he will say move left today you must hear him part time and there is a grace i have studied this subject of hearing god properly i can tell you hearing god even prophets have problem with hearing god let me tell you something about hearing God. The gift of prophecy, the hearing that comes to prophesy is not the same hearing that comes to give you direction. You can walk in accuracy. I can look at your name, call your number, call everything and you will be surprised how stranded you will be to hear the voice of God. 
most people don't know because many people are, are prophesying nonsense and lies the hearing ear I, I have a lot of friends and, and, and by God's grace I've met very powerful and accurate prophets and you will be amazed at how stranded they are waiting for God to speak on matters in their lives and yet the accuracy that comes from them makes you believe that oh they are just lying down no where was the hearing of the son of the prophet who died and his wife was about to be taken the children were about to be taken the man was a prophet read your bible and see how many prophets were stranded be careful let me tell you this one day i will teach you how human beings spiritually are like machines i will teach you how god works with men so that just because a man is prophesying and dispensing mysteries let me tell you sincerely okay let, let's put it this way let's use midwives right have you noticed that you can see a midwife who has been giving birth helping people give birth for years and then when she is now pregnant you can be so surprised at the difficulty that she goes through and you are wondering madam with this experience right after her giving birth that almost took her life she will display that mastery again in the hospital prophets cry it's amazing how confused prophets can be I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower listen and I will hear what you will say unto me read your Bible and see people who missed very vital seasons in their lives although their gifts and their graces were still there when I learned this I learned this mystery from Dr. D.K. Olukoya I was listening to him some years ago and he said something he said that one of the greatest prayer you can pray is for a hearing ear and I said what is the meaning of that and you see if God helps you and you walk in a dimension of these graces you must be careful because most times we see the flamboyancy on the gift and you can join men even to deceive yourself that just because that gift that prophetic operation is at work it necessarily means you yourself are accurate it's not true have you not seen people dying of infirmity and healing others what is the mystery behind it if, if you understand what i'm this thing is a very deep teaching that's why the bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling one of the unsearchable riches of christ is a grace that can be given to men that you hear the sounds of the spirit you stand and watch and say i've heard him god is saying go left and everybody is saying go right use common sense you know you heard god when you move left after five years people look at you i have seen a bit of what hearing god can do this ministry today my brothers and my sisters is proof that when men get these unsearchable riches you won't go down i'm not one person who comes all the time and say god said god said i'm very careful now we have especially we young people we have abused god said anybody just comes and says god said just because you felt like god said no or just because you were under the anointing and your mouth was talking there are tongues of men there are tongues of angels there is the voice of god are you getting what i'm saying now this is very powerful you must learn it there are times when i hear god speak everyone around me knows god has said the voice of god comes with the spirit of faith if it is god that you hear the voice of god will always come with the spirit of faith hmm. and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me it's impossible to hear god and remain and sit down there no 
here and there you can think you had God and he said go to Kano you can say I know I had Kano but tomorrow you just turn but you know God is very faithful he will allow you he knows we are students in the school of the spirit just keep playing around but the day his majestic voice lands on your life there is no power that can stop you let me tell you God is not always speaking God speaks but he's not always speaking a lot of people keep saying God is always speaking no sir are you always talking at least you were created in his image no in the fifth day of the sixth month the word of the Lord came the word of the Lord came the word of the Lord came I've had occasions where God has spoken to me and you have seen it even some of the messages there are messages here that God gave me the titles and I was I've been surprised at how they seem to have carried an unusual grace because God said it I stand here many times and I tell you this is what God is saying and then you begin to see the strange things that he is doing let's be careful with this God said let's not reduce God to become a man now it doesn't mean that you can hear things there is the knowing of the spirit there is the witness of the spirit they all look like voices you have to be very deep in the spirit to separate between impulses and speakings they are very different just because you had a spiritual communication does not mean God spoke remember that in the realm of the spirit the voice is not the only way to speak light is a way of communicating love is a language it can speak so i can hear that's the reason why regardless of how sure you think you are stay for verification when god spoke about koinonia to start three days we had set up the departments god has granted us grace i remember if you remember that time i was telling you god told me this and that and that People will come from nations and people. This is what God said. I remember saying it that time. As at the time I said it, I said I saw CGC. This is not what I saw. I saw it broken, expanded. What is this that I'm seeing? I saw people standing, parking, filling the roads. And you no, know, like as usual, every time you say God said, you need grace yourself to believe it. Because there are times that you just sit and say, okay, now I'm calm. It's like you, you smoked, uh, 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 what they call this thing. And so you went high and to you, you can even say, look at the nonsense that I said. And you listen to your own message and say, hey, it's not exactly God. And God said, what are you saying? I'm the one speaking. We were preparing to start packaging our messages. I was thanking God and trusting and blessing him for the anointing he had given me and just say, oh God, thank you because you are going to use our media ministry as a very major stream of income to bless the ministry and lift us. And here comes the voice of God. No. In this season, you are not going to sell your messages. Facebook, that time, it was, I mean, it was even the first head of media's Facebook page. And he said, just carry your messages and put them on MP3, put them on Facebook. Don't put the videos, just the audios and i will give it wings and it will go to the nations of the earth that's it my brothers and my sisters when god says sit back and watch the power that created the universe push things in your life there are things god has said listen to me there are things god has said when god talks notice that god doesn't care what you are seeing he tells you what you will do and he will do it So I stand upon my watch. I'm not in a hurry to move. God, what are you saying in this season? That's the reason why we have workers retreats. That's why we have our own retreats. A few weeks now, I'm going to start my end of year retreat. I'm telling you, you don't know how excited I am at that time. Because many of you have gone, no disturbances. I just shut my phone. And sometimes you need to get out of the busyness of life to hear God because there is as it were many voices many sounds and none of them is without significance the voice of house rent can interrupt what God is saying this spiritual haziness has a science the encumbrances of life can push you your child's school fees your life 
and God is saying fast for three days I say is it God is it a demon is it yes there are times that you check against the word of God but let me tell you there are times only God will help you because even you you don't know whether this is God again most people are not spiritual enough to get to this realm that's why they don't understand Years ago, I've shared with you the story. I had limited transport fare from Kaduna back to Zaria. And I took initiative and I went and ate yam and beans also with the money. I mean, why sit here till we die? Remember the four lepers. At least I should do one. I already know that it's only God that will know how to take me back home. And I believed with all my heart that I was acting by faith. And I did. And I stood in front of the junction near Waek office in Kaduna. And a car just stopped and the Holy Spirit told me, enter. Public transport. Oh. I told you the voice of God comes with the spirit of faith. It's until the act has been done when you turn back on hindsight. You say, it has to be God who led me like this. When you are passing through it, you don't see the gravity of the faith you are exerting. It's when you look back and say, eh. I entered that car, I was just in rest. Rest. You are supposed to be afraid. You know how some of these our brothers are around and all of that. Until we pass Jaji. I knew there was no hope you know if it's 10 naira you don't have or 20 naira you can beg but i mean when well, well, you don't even have up to 20 or 30 percent of what is the transport fare and then they now said everybody bring your money and people were bringing them but my god is my witness my heart was at peace this is what happens when it's god that is speaking you leave him to be responsible for the word i just obeyed And that was how someone brought out paid my transport fare i dropped at flyover here entered the bus happy because i felt at least whatever it is this one i'll pay and someone knew me in the car and paid i stopped in front of north gate with the same money i was with there it was a message god was saying look i am god by myself i can do it anyhow there are times i can send a helper to give you money there are times i say the helper is in the car enter and meet him there it doesn't matter where the helper is believe god enough to go there are times he parts the waters there are times he says walk on it let it just be that he see him are you hearing what i'm saying now you will need this for ministry when god sent us to go for our crusade we got up and moved like madmen what you see today my brothers and my sisters is a product of the voice of god you need the grace to hear god not grace for prophecy lord let me hear you. You, you, you you look you can pray and say god search my frail person what is the most accurate spiritual mechanism of communicating your voice to me help me in that area there are some of you that your hearing you have not trained your hearing if you if god speaks through your ears you will not hear and so you are going to say lord give me a kind of dream that i will wake up and find myself standing i will know that this one was not a dream let me tell you if your heart is right god will give you there are dreams that no devil can tell you in your mind mind how many of you have had what we call prophetic dreams you know this one is not my mind this is the voice of god unsearchable riches the hearing ear the seeing eye one time the storm was boisterous i think it was peter or paul and it was very obvious they were going to capsize and all of a sudden the hearing ear and the seeing eye an angel appears to him and speaks to him and says don't worry there shall be no loss and he calmed the people down and said, Hey, relax. An angel has appeared to me. And he has said to me that there shall be no loss. And the Bible says that the storm calmed down and they went safely and arrived at an island called Melita. 
when you hear God you can sit in the midst of fire and be singing and people are saying excuse me sir this is fire you say no I'm sitting on the voice of God roasting someone by your left roasting another person by your right and acting as if the fire is not seeing you sooner or later you will need this message sooner or later you will carry destinies come darling you will carry destinies that are behind you and you will need to hear god on behalf of them one day you will have children one day you will have grandchildren and that day this spiritual blessing will be tested one day you will be a man of god with a crowd of people now all of you are waiting for the prophetic word next year whether i tell lies or not you will believe it's left for me and god and if i lie you will punish me are you seeing how risky it is many of you say we are praying for you but you know you are not even serious about what you are saying because you are saying apostle <laughs> the god that called you how you have been hearing him before let him help you just make sure you hear well for us you hear wrongly as a man of god for members and see the way their lives they will obey you against god Just because you are fasting for a long time does not mean that your ears will hear it's a grace like earphone god will just put that spiritual earphone and start dictating this is how 2019 will be do this do that do this do that and he said god but like like Eliab, this is good and god says that's exactly the strategy satan wants to use next year use this route and you come out and he said people we're ready to go and they look at you and say ah just like that and god says don't mind them that's always how that's how the nation of israel was that's why moses was angry because he would suffer and hear god and come and talk to them and they would doubt husband please learn to hear god for your wife and your children otherwise one day god will be saying move left and you come with your degree and masters and phd nothing wrong you move left until life chains you in one position change your wife change the destiny of your children many of us sitting down here if our parents had god you shouldn't be at this level is that true there are a number of us we are going to pray many of us we are victims of the lack of hearing Many of our parents were called into ministry. They ran away, not hearing. And the blessing that would have come to us, if they obeyed God, it would have been easy. You would have been born again since four years. But their disobedience, now you got born again at 31. Look how hard it is for you to learn the things of the kingdom. The hearing ear is a grace. Man of God, please whatever you will do with god i don't care what is not going on in your life if you can hear god hear god on who to marry hello hear god on who to marry you if god planned four children and you give birth to seven you will take care of four he supplies he supplies follow his voice i know you think i'm laughing this is how our lack of spirituality has cheated people in the world before kings went for war they would inquire of the lord is it in your bible shall we go and god will say go and give them the strategy we have lost this in our generation so we just step out and and life just beats us into nonsense what of relocating a place where you want to be domiciled in where your family will be raised in you don't hear god i've told you that when the devil wants to destroy some people he will give them visa visa to germany visa to europe just because the interview was easy doesn't mean it's god there are times that satan can give favor to kill you there used to be a guy who used to drive me years ago like maybe four five years ago he was desperate to go to germany i said what is it for i got to find out that he did one funny arranging thing where you do some kind of marriage with somebody there on contract then you come prepare papers and then fight divorce and then from there you have your papers and i don't know where that guy is now but he's a 
classic representation of grace to grass there are pastors that started well they kept navigating ministry well mighty men and women with anointing and then something happened in their life they didn't hear correctly or they didn't hear or they went based on the pride that results can bring no matter who you are if you trivialize the voice of god your head must touch the ground i'm telling you this it doesn't matter what level you get to in life and ministry please hear god as if you are just starting don't say because god has given me this my name is joshua selman god has given me results in ministry if you hear me talk to you like this i know what i'm saying lord should i pursue lord is this your will for me is this your will for me oh there's one conference that, that i have many great men and women of god some of my friends around within this nation around and sometimes they have innocently felt apostle let's put forth a program let's put forth this and that and that people have come to tell me apostle what are you waiting for it's in the blueprint of the ministry to start sunday services what are you waiting for i remember one prophet of god very powerful prophet of god met me and said what are you waiting for start church and i just looked and said god bless you but this year i can't claim i hear everything but my goodness there are things this year can hear we are going to pray and when it's time to pray you are going to cry if it means you laying hands on your ears to say lord i am reaping the fruit of my not hearing you it's very clear that my life is the way it is now because i'm not hearing you are we together you need to hear god when you begin to hear multiple voices calm down none of them is god let me give you a big secret i don't care what you are trying to hear the moment you are hearing multiple voices shut down none of them is god the majesty and the jealousy of god will not allow you to hear many things his voice is mighty upon the waters when you start hearing many voices rose magdalene mary janet shut down my friend you are not hearing god just shut down lord what is the devil trying to do you are going to abuja today next tomorrow you are praying and it's like you saw the map of kano and then it's like you now saw london <clears throat> shut down lord what are you saying please hear what i'm i'm teaching you this based on the word and based on experience most people who get into trouble ignore the voice of god consciously somewhere along the journey this is true for marriage this is true for jobs this is true for geographic locations there are men of god that just stand up and go somewhere and just say well after all i'm, I'm a believer in christ i love the lord we are going to plant this church here and they find out they are struggling for a very long time it was bishop oyedeko that was saying how that there was a time that they started the church in ghana living faith was blossoming doing very well and they started the church in ghana and there was so much struggle after like four was it five years or six years or so the increase was not there and he was struggling everything he said he went there by himself to preach and still nothing worked and he went back and said god what is the problem and god said i am not there and he said shut it down immediately There are some of you from this message tonight you need to go and shut down a lot of things in your life because if you check it you will find out there's nothing wrong if you thought it was god you are a student in the school of the spirit oh i thought this business was god but now i'm hearing this is not god oh. i thought that it was god that said i should start the ministry i remember years ago when my well friends and all of that you know not really close friends will meet me and say apostle with the kind of grace you have start a tv ministry start this i told you about pfn when we had our first crusade pfn was willing to give me pastors and give me an auditorium to say start start a church we need you be careful not every good thing is god things don't have to be bad for you to leave them sometimes they can be good they are just not god There was a time i was preparing taking my bath years ago i had a meeting i don't know if it was in kaduna or one of these places i had prayed fasted prepared a powerful message as as i was taking my bath all of a sudden 
my peace i will come to that we'll discuss peace peace as one of the mysteries in the kingdom to bail men out the stubbornness of men will not allow them understand how the peace of god works he said he will speak peace peace is a voice peace can warn you and say you are landing in hot water peace can tell you man of god this association you are joining is what will destroy you it doesn't mean they are fake it doesn't mean they are not of god but this association is what will bring down your grace man of god be careful peace that's why i told you that these are the systems by which the saints dominate so you can see that you can have a dream and in your dream you saw a mecca dying but in the physical it will never happen because there is a mystery that shields him the dream you saw was the intention of satan but there is a fortification of a mystery you can have a dream and see joshua selman dying in a motor accident and start praying and say hey, so this is how apostle will die <laughs> i i guarantee you to remain as a dream you don't know what is covering this man that is standing it's not pride do you know how many times death has tested me oh. make him ma, make him ma, make him Not faithful with unrighteous mammon who shall commit to your trust the true riches of the kingdom these are the mysteries we do ministry with these are the mysteries by which kings rise and you look at a man and you see the wonder that his life emits and you are saying my god how is this thing working my brothers and my sisters these are the systems paul said me who i am the least of all the apostles was this grace given that i become a communicator of the unsearchable riches i have learned these things and they have helped me they have delivered me from evil that prayer lead us not into temptation but deliver us one hearing from god can deliver you and deliver your children's children our parents went head on some of them were the colleagues of some of the men of god in nigeria today and had they continued hearing god well they would have given us a good footing but the inability to hear i have seen pastors men of god that i knew years ago men of fire and seen them and their shadows of themselves how can a man's yesterday be better than his tomorrow because of one of these spiritual blessings no wisdom some of us have lost destiny help us that can change our lives because of the wisdom to be given to navigate friendship are you ready to pray tonight these are the keys by which we reign my brothers and my sisters look at me forget about cars truly believe me forget about houses forget about all this fake life up and down when you possess these things you will tame life it will be at your command you will watch yourself with shock and wonder there are about eight of these true riches we'll preach it in a series next i just felt in my spirit to introduce it tonight the spiritual blessings that constitute an advantage in a believer i like you in the next our time is gone but in the next five minutes find a corner find somewhere and cry to god i'll just allow you instrumentally just set the atmosphere for us everyone pray everyone pray
be unsearchable, unfathomable riches of God. Partakers of the riches of His goodness. Partakers of the riches of His wisdom. Partakers of the riches of spiritual understanding. Partakers of the hearing ear, the seeing eye, the hearing ear, the seeing eye. Lord, help my ministry. Lord, help my business. Help my family. just one of all of this that I listed the grace to hear you listen I like you to cry with all your heart Lord grant me the grace I'm tired of thinking it is you when it is not you let your voice be mighty upon the waters. Speak to me, O God, concerning ministry. Speak to me, O God, concerning family. God, but please listen. We have just one more service for the year. Lord, activate the speakings of angels. The angel came and told Daniel, he said, I am come to give you understanding. There are angels that are sent. I like you by faith to activate their ministry. The angels, the ministry spirits, bringing accuracy, bringing direction. Thank you. 
When God cleanses your ears and helps you listen, listen. The voice of God will take away wastage from your life. Wastage. There are many men of God whose ministries finances have gone down because they didn't hear God. They organized conferences. God was not in it. Yes, souls were saved. Yes, lives were transformed. There are many people who should not even have churches but they thought they had this is not to scare you but i'm being sincere with you happy is the man whose ears can hear the voice of god because you see we live in an arrogant society where people and their pride will mislead you away from god this our world is very proud you see people who don't know where they are going but they make you feel stupid for staying where god said you should stay and if you are not careful they will rob you of the courage to stand until you fall with them if i followed what people said if i followed what people wanted to do in my life if i followed what people wanted me to do i would have crashed in life and crashed in ministry some of us after koinonia listen i this we have one more service maximize it are we together some of us after this service you, you should go and find somewhere even if it's for one hour in the night to say lord this issue of hearing you you have to tidy this in my life everything you claim god told you by now we know he's not the one that said it don't feel ashamed but you must go back and say what is this families have died they have lost loved ones simply because people could not hear the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days the spirit speaketh expressly expressly God who in sundry times and diverse manners spoke to us through the prophets had in this last day spoken to us through his son the word that he has appointed heir over all things god is still speaking speaking to men and women and by speaking is not just you need to know you need to pray that god purifies your dreams some of us our dreams have been hijacked by forces let me tell you many things god wanted to tell you in dreams but there are powers that have hijacked the dreams to the point that now you don't even trust it yet dreams and visions it says i have multiplied visions i have spoken in similitudes even by the prophets these are all spiritual channels of prophetic communication let's use one more minute to speak that the blood of god the blood of jesus speaks over your dreams over your discernment and say lord i crush the voice of wickedness let there be a purification of the dreams of the vision a purification i cause manipulations of dreams and visions by the gates of hell confusing men confusing women confusing men of god confusing destinies we crush it in the name of jesus
all the major camps christian camps in this nation that belong to the fathers of faith i've had the privilege to be there to walk around the length and breadth and being in those places i said kai it is good to hear god it's good to hear god i've seen the areas in my life where i had god and i've seen the excellency and the blessings of the results in my own life and in effect the life of others are we together now we have a series this is just an introduction but please let me challenge you when you go back especially this issue of hearing god do you know why many people are small in our generation i will tell you why because we follow instincts instincts brain work oh this is a b c this is efg god does not take away your intelligence but you see a spiritual man the bible says that you do not know the wind blow it where it listeth you cannot tell where it is going or where it is coming he says so is one who is led by the spirit you need an experience of a hearing ear and a seeing eye there are encounters i have had and god has spoken to me through them i will die believing it if i get to heaven and i find out i'm wrong i will apologize with all humility but for now they have become my convictions they drive my life there is no gate of hell that sustains the power to derail that focus because of the power of what was heard and seen if you do not hear the voice of god one day you will leave ministry if you do not hear the voice of god one day you will look at your wife and say are you sure you were supposed to be the one i'll marry or you look at your children you will look at your loved ones one day you will just commit suicide out of frustration but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded father tonight we thank you you have granted us access to know that there are unsearchable riches in christ there are systems of advantage that you have designed that when we walk in them our lives become invincible lord i cry tonight i have introduced this deep mystery that you have shown me to your people in the simplest form possible lord i pray that you proceed with the quickening of these teachings grant unto your dear people access even to deeper understanding of these things lord that on the strength of these truths we will rise like an edifice and bring you glory and compel our generation to do same we thank you for your grace tonight we love you for the abundance of your hand upon our lives in the name of jesus christ dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny. Salas kade bash kana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto pray kate kene kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.